Real Life Street Stars, man. We got a situation. Man, we got him in the building. Mr. Solar himself, God dang. You know, you know. Uh, man, I have to say like this, man. You yourself have caused a lot of ruckus, man. On this couch alone. And Crazy. we said it's only right to come in and basically uh, people hear a name. They may not follow the full story, but it's always good to get uh, all sides of the story, especially if there's multiple, uh, you know, uh, ways to come at it, multiple uh, aspects of looking at it. Mm -hmm. And um, your story goes way beyond just even us having a uh, Jaguar on his couch, Goomba on his couch. Um, it goes way beyond that. Um, but, you know, again, a lot of people on our platform have heard of your name based on us, you know, doing an interview with Jaguar Wright. Correct. Who did a lot of views. Um, Y'all, of course, eventually started doing business together, uh, making music together. Um, I want to unpack it like this because I want to address that first and foremost as far as even All right. you and Jaguars linking up because me and you spoke prior off camera and I met you, you know, through Jaguar and stuff like that. And your, your story was already interesting, but then shit hit the fan. So with that being <laughs> said, um, first and foremost, man, Solar, uh, your introduction to Jaguar Wright. Yeah. How did that come about? Like, I'm, I'm glad you asked that because that was my first thought. I'm like, if you think about it, like, there was a story for Jaguar to be interested in, which is how I met her. You know, there was already stuff going on in my life. And when she heard some of the things, she resonated with it. You know, as over my span of time getting to know her, you know, deeply, and I'll use the words intimately, she's telling me things that are about her childhood, you know, how she grew up, where she grew up, very beautiful things, you know, to where I got to get to know her uh, deeply because she connected to me deeply. Little did I know she had a cult background. I don't know who you, who's seen that one uh, show with the, with the thing Tyler Perry did, but it's, it's kind of like that. Yeah. And that was kind of like my life, but my life was a little less ruthless. I don't know if you could, I'm allowed to say that on here, but yeah. it was a little, yeah, okay, it was a little, like that and we actually resonated off of that so it's like i guess that some people would define that as a trauma bond <laughs> they'll be like you're trauma yeah, 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 yeah. all right we sure did but the bond is there and it's strong and i feel like we've healed this is something that we healed out of over many many years so it's made us and developed us into who we are and i you cannot rewind the hands of time on that one Thanks. so it's like those become our areas of expertise and we become very humanitarian as a result of that you know how do we maintain our original goal and vision, but also at the same time, you know, defend ourselves and do things for ourselves now without getting too culty or too involved with other people. You know, how do we balance that? Then you see people like Jaguar, like myself, things in common is we just help everybody we can. So I have to ask you, um, did you, did you introduce yourself to Jaguar or Jaguar introdu introduced herself to you or was there a mutual person who kind of brought y'all two oh, together? Is, I'm glad you asked this. I, it's funny. I did not like Jaguar when I first met her. I'm gonna be real with y'all. Like, I have to laugh that up. I'm gonna be real with y'all because I seen, like, I heard about her and I seen her and I was like, okay, cool. Jaguar, right, the superstar. All right, y'all hanging out with a superstar. Y'all cool now. All right. And then I'm looking into her more and I'm like, interesting. And I'm not knowing what she's doing currently. I'm not knowing what she's currently. I'm thinking, like, oh, this is like an old superstar that you guys knew about? Like, right. okay, cool. How is it relevant now? So I didn't know what she was talking about. I didn't know what she knew. I didn't know who she was. I didn't know her character, nothing. So first day I see her, and I'm glad this is crazy you're asking me this because now I know the truth behind it. I didn't like her the first day I met her because I felt like she was very sloppy. I felt like she was really like just gone. I felt like she was like like dead in a sense. Like, and I was, you gotta, you gotta kind of emphasize, what, what do you mean? Yeah, like, like her energy was like, ugh, like, ugh, ugh. When and, first met her then. Yeah, and I was like, and I was up making music, I'm motivated, I'm trying to do this, I'm trying to do that. I just got out of a breakup with Velvet. Like, I'm like going through it. Like, if y'all don't know who that is, just who Velvet is alone is crazy, especially in my life. Yeah, we're gonna go through that. So yeah, I'm hurting at this point when I'm meeting her and I'm doing the best I can to work out and be up and be good. And um, you know, Jaguar comes in just, uh. And I'm talking to, uh, to uh, Goomba, I'm talking to him, like being like he cool he up 
He seemed all right. He got the tech going. He's he seems to be putting things together. I like him. So I actually ended up being cool with him. Me and him became very close. There you go. Day one. And then me and him, I became close to Jaguar, figuring out who she was more through him, realizing like, oh, she's like a superstar and you're running the tech for her. Oh, that's your dynamic. I'm used to that. I seen that in the cult. That was like us in the cult, but I see the dynamic quickly. So would you say that you woken her back up? Because again, y'all did music, you know, as y'all met. I mean, y'all were, she, you got her. She doesn't do music a lot or often. Y'all, you actually got her back to doing music. Would you feel like you kind of inspired her to get her back in that based on her energy being what you saw? I think that I'm a catalyst for sure. I think what inspired her, though, is the turmoil in her life that people don't know. While she's sitting here talking about Big L and Jay-Z and all those things, which, like, literally, like, it's facts. Just sit down and think about what she's talking about. If you ever sit down and really listen to Jaguar, it's like, and then look at who she is. It's like, all right, bro, like, that's too valid. Now I understand this. You can literally look at what she's talking about from the past and understand the present. So I really like her for that. Um, what was the original question? Because well, okay, so go back to the original original question. No, 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 right now. Oh, just right now. Yeah. As far as do you feel like you inspired her to oh, do correct, music because y'all made music together? I was a catalyst, but her pain and all that stuff behind the scenes that we're not seeing while she's talking about all these people, she ain't talking about herself. Nobody ain't knowing what's going on with her. That's why I feel very proud to really speak on this because I was able to witness her in person and I know she's, it's always been there. I didn't, I was a catalyst, but she's been that artist. She's been wanting to do that. What was holding her back was a question. And that's what she had to investigate for herself. And you can blame the relationship, but it was something about her that she had, we had to talk about. So when did this kind of friction begin again between you and Goomba? Oh man. So, at the end, the very end of, of my, my window of spending time with them, very end of that window, and prior to that window, closing with the, all the chaotic events, um, Goomba, my relationship with him, um, I just started calling him Goomba now, that's so weird. Um, my relationship with him, him basically is like, I'm used to him crying on my shoulder at night. That's my relationship with him. I'm used to, to me and him bonding, looking at things in his relationship, in his life, to where he's very unsatisfied with himself. We're, we're going through like YouTube videos, looking at self-help YouTube videos and things like that because he's like stuck. He needs help. And he's asking me for help on the behind the scenes because I'm there and I clearly got my shit together mentally. So me and him were able to spend those nights and days going through a lot of healing for him as a man and how she makes him feel in the relationship. So there's individual work they're going through. Jaguar ain't having none of it. She just being herself. He's going through a lot of emotional turmoil himself. All right, so I want to ask something real quick, and this is going to be in a situation to kind of lead up to the incident that kind of things going forward. But I got to get you. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to bullshit you here. So did you feel like you overstepped your boundaries in their relationship and their marriage that led to what happened? In no way, shape, or form. As a matter of fact, Jaguar and I, like subconsciously, without even having to say it, set up boundaries to what we called ourselves, oh, Auntie Jag or nephew. This is my nephew. This is my nephew. Hey, y'all, meet my nephew. This is my nephew, Solar. I'm from Cali, so I'm used to cuz, all that. So nephew to me is like, cool, normal. I like it. I like nephew. Yeah, they call my dad, um, they call him Uncle Courtney. Everybody, call, the whole neighborhood call my dad Uncle Courtney. So I'm used to, uh, you know, oh, that's my auntie. Like that dynamic is easy for me to run with. And so we had that, and it actually made us way more solid. You know, it's like, oh, we family immediately. So those terms and the ability to use those terms and be cool really made us close, you know? And I don't think that that was the issue that Goomba had. That wasn't the issue. What do you feel the issue was? Um, because we had Goomba on his couch, and mm -hmm. he, I don't know if you watched his interview, but he went through just all his emotions of what he thought it was. What did you see? as far as what built up to his, you know, eruption? Like, what did, what did you see? Or did you even see anything? Did you see, like, any problems or anything? That's funny. Um, anything uh, anything he, he really said, I didn't watch none of his interviews, but just something's telling me that it's, like, a lot of cap. And I'm sure, like, it's not that big of a story, bro. Like, unless your story was being, like, completely introspective on what you could have did and where you could have grown, like, it ain't got no emotions are connected to me at all in this situation because it's not actually happening. 
In the present day, every day, we cool. They got a whole space to themselves and room to themselves. I got my whole own space and room to myself. And then there's a middle section. As we're traveling, like there's so much space. There's no room to even mistake things. We never even spending time alone or separated at all. It's like we're always just the three of us. It's never like just one or two or just me and her and then him and then him. So, it's always me and him and then she going to try and do something. We got to follow out to her. It's, one it's thing, very interesting. One, one thing Go he ahead. said, I got to ask this because I got to interject yeah, right yeah, there. I don't know what he said. He said when you say that y'all never were separate, he said there would be times where he would leave and go to the bathroom or go to another room and he felt like that's where something may have happened to where you might have done something to his wife. Yeah, so like I said, that's where I go with the capery. He don't believe that. He don't believe that. Um, that's bull, that's cap, that's bullshit. And I mean, you could tell yourself a lie so many times and convince yourself of it, but we talking about a guy who's been in a straight jacket about five times now. And you know, I'm hearing what you're saying, and I don't want to go in the wrong correct direction, and I don't want to misconstrue anything. But it seems like you and Goomba had a better, more intimate relationship than you and Jaguar. God damn, you good. And not only that, is is I, it had to be that way because he's the one who's really going through stuff. Jaguar's tolerating this for years to her own detriment, and it's like um. It's like, I get leech vibes. So, could it have been a more jealousy thing then? And so, what it was, because um, he told Jaguar this directly in the time frame. She let me know what happened behind the scenes, what they did talk about in that room. When they were, when we had our separation, I'm over in my own world, like, <laughs> on the computer making music. I'm on live in the bathtub. I'm over here trying to get, trying to get uh, the girl who broke up with me back. It's all kind of different things I'm going through. I'm having a blast. I'm in Louisiana. The girl who I, want, who I was in love with, you know, at the time, and who just broke up with me from Louisiana, so it was really beautiful to talk about and be with um but me and jag actually got close because i do feel like she felt i was helping goomba out it was nothing with her, with her she's good i trust her she's straight i read her chart she's good she really don't need me for nothing she don't need nobody she's really good she sacrifices and martyrs herself though and this is a commitment she made and she's one of the most loyal people you'll ever meet that's why she can wholeheartedly go at people, I believe, because her foundation on where she stands is complete loyalty and honesty. And I believe that. Jaguar, I don't believe she'll ever lie about me, nor has she ever. Her husband, on the other hand, the trash can full of them. Not to be rude or anything, but I mean, people who treat their women like this, very hard to. Now, he kind of described you as a sort of mystic, like you have the abilities, you know, hypnotizing and um energy yeah. shifting, things of that nature. Are those your abilities? Do you claim that? Can you speak on that? What, what, yeah. what was he talking about? So this is one ability I got. Check this out. Check this out, right? <laughs> oh, oh, I fucked up. You got me. <laughs> That's one of my abilities right. and um if that's mystical or that's crazy the reason is because i've developed an extreme level of self-control and discipline in any situation to where you know if i didn't handle things with a certain level of control and discipline um me and jaguar and him could all be dead or in jail at this point quite literally uh, from what we actually went through so I don't know what he told everybody that had happened, and I'm sure he gave a certain story about it, but if I just say directly like what happened, it's, 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 it's hard for me to do because I don't want to put people in jail. I've already been put in a position to press charges on him, and I chose not to because I know he needs help. Right. He doesn't need to go to jail, and he doesn't need to be uh, beaten or any of that. He needs help, period. And, you know, but how are you able to stay calm when in the, you know, you know, when a pistol becomes involved in Correct. the threatening of your life or, Correct. you know, how, did, how, was, how does one able to stay calm in that type of, I don't, you know, no, I don't, you good. That's a good question. I don't claim to be, I'm not a pacifist. So, mm -hmm. you know, a nigga tried me like that. We going all the way there. Oh, you know what? And in my head, I remember in my head, I was in the back because this day that built up to that, mm -hmm. we, he's, it's a new side of him we've never seen. 
And Jaguars is just like, it's the Sabbath, it's the Sabbath, it's the Sabbath. And, and I'm like not really knowing too much about that or what that is. I have to look that up. You know, I'm looking that up in a car. You know what I'm saying? I'm like trying to figure out what she's saying. She's like, oh, the devil's here. She keeps trying to say the devil's here. And we're pulling over like every three or four seconds. And he's having an episode about something. And I mean, I'm telling you, I don't know who's ever drove from, from Dallas to Shreveport, but that's not a long trip. This was about 12 hours. It took us 12 hours to conquer that. And this is us trying to celebrate her first million views on real life, on, on Street Stars. She's trying to celebrate uh, her first million views on, on this platform. We trying to get crawfish. And, and from this point on, I had maybe about six or seven talks from this point, from this point on, I had about six or seven different talks with him at stops, you know, to get the food and things like that. And she's so fed up and pissed off. She's just getting out, doing it herself, like sitting in the bar, getting her drink, treating herself, having a good time. I, you know, I, I don't blame her. I'm sitting in the car like, like she's telling me, come on, nephew, let's go. Come on, come on. And I'm like, I can't because I got morals. I'm not, like, not going to do that. So I'm like, I'm like, it's cool, auntie, go ahead. I'll be right in. We're going to celebrate in a minute. Me and Goomba are going to be right in. We're about to celebrate with you. And this was like the beginning of really the episodes. And he acts like a big old little, like a big old child. Like, I'm sorry, I have to imitate it for a minute just to uh, just do it. And I, I think it's fun to do this anyway. Just to imitate it for a minute. It's like, oh, man, oh, oh we got our first million views. I want to get some crawfish. Let's try and get some crawfish. Oh, no, we, we got to be here at this time. They wanted to be here. To celebrate, to throw the party that night. This was that night. They wanted to be here to pop the bottles and celebrate the million of views. And that's what we was going for. We wanted to be here. So we're like, oh, we got a schedule. We got to leave at this time. We're already kind of late. We're already doing other stuff. And it's fine. So it's like, let's reroute. Let's get there. He's a, I think maybe ex-military or something kicked in. I don't know. But he just became so like robotic to where he wouldn't let us just get crawfish and a drink before we, would, before we left. She wanted a green tea martini. A green tea something and a, some crawfish and some beignets that was it and each time we stopped i had a talk with him and the episodes would be like this he would be basically let's stop right here he's uh, and, and then he'll be like we don't have time for that no we can't do that we don't have time for that we, don't gotta, we, gotta, we gotta be here this time we gotta be there and we're like okay i'm like i get it i'm like okay we said we had to do that i maybe he's i get it he's not been acting like this the whole time i've been with him so there's a switch here He's not been acting like this at all. I've been with a mature, grown dude who we doing tech together, doing self-help, emotions, real healing. I'm with a human right now. At this point, something switched, and I didn't know his condition until this point. Then I learned his condition, why he takes medication. I learned it at this point and why he takes his medication. I experienced the other him at the end of our trip. And pretty much... It's getting almost violent to the point to where there's times where he's the gun is out and all he's sitting there doing is just like modifying the lens and everything. And I remember I had a gun. I took it from him one time and I had it and I was using it and I was like, OK, cool. All right. Cause I know how to use guns and I'm taking it apart. I'm like, OK. I'm like, bro, this is all the way off. This is like all the way off. How are you going to do protecting? He's like, well, yeah, I just I was going to fix it later on today. But he's sitting in a car every day just like twisting it and playing with it. So I'm knowing this is a menace. I'm knowing that this isn't, this is a menace. This is, his, this is his wife. This is his comfort. And he will not let it go. And it's just a threat that's public out there in a the view that is just always there. And as he freaks out, where do you think his hands are going as he's freaking out and yelling? Every time. This is repeatedly, repeatedly. I've thought about I mean, do you know how many times I could have took it and did this and did that? I thought about so many times grabbing it, walking out the car, doing everything I need to do. Be like, get the fuck out the car. Nigga. Like, come at me. I'm busting your legs. Like, I've thought about so because I'm protecting Jaguar, myself, I had to come up with these. I'm, I'm literally like in the car for hours, consoling the dude, learning much about him, really trying to emotionally heal this shit so it don't turn into nothing. So it don't. Let me, let me ask you a question. Yeah. So in the interview, he says that you started massaging Jaguar. Is that that's false or is that true? He said because 
the way you speak about him, like he's very violent. And then no, nah, no, nah, we we was all hands on because I gave him as many massages as I gave yeah, Jaguar at the same you time. Really reached for him too. And... Yeah, I sure did many times. I didn't console this man multiple times. So it was like for for him to even take that the wrong way on the last day, it's it's just ammo. I don't care because he knows the vibes. That's ammo. So now I'm helping him more than her. I, man. What yeah, it, it, I told them they need to get actual massages if you really want to get down to that. The way I'm seeing the actual triangle of it, you, of course, you're there helping him, and Jaguar is thankful that you're there helping him. Yeah, yeah. He's there wanting Jaguar, but she's more kind of focused on you. you and I don't want to say no she's focused on you, but. It seems like it seems like a trifecta that just the energy was all no, just going around. It's not. It's energy flowing, and then there's a brick. There's a block. There's somebody who chooses not to work on themselves or look at themselves for anything. Period. You got you got a mature adult, a mature adult, and a child. Is what you have. Ment mentally, mentally. This is Call of Duty turned real. He plays Call of Duty so much. So much, he plays Call of Duty so much that he had to get the gun from the game. He's not even supposed to have a gun. So, this is a toy right, for a boy. Jaguar points it at him, he points at himself. I, there, there was that whole, you know, so, so you're there seeing this? And like, toxic relationships, this was the end end. Like at this point we got out the car, I'm ready. I'm like done, I'm like this nigga can disappear at this point. Yeah. At this point, like because at, this was the last one where I felt like I'm gonna have to get physical, someone's about to die. Yeah. Someone's about to die. Yeah, he just had he just put one in the chamber, made sure we all knew about it, pointed it at her, pointed it at himself. I'll kill myself. You want me to kill myself? You want me to kill myself? And now he's pointing it at her. We're going like this, trying to give her the gun, saying, I'll oh, shoot me. Shoot me. If you leave me, you might as well just kill me. You might as well just kill me. Okay, so I know that he's not a bad guy, he's hurt. Now at this point, it's like yeah, you, you, you 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 hurt. You know, Goomba's not a bad guy. People don't know what Goomba has going on genealogy-wise. They don't know what he has going on societally. They don't know what he go has going on mentally, conditioning. I do. What he's battling, what he's fighting. I do. know. So even when it gets down to the worst of the worst, I'm still hugging him saying, hey, bro, I love you. You need help. You know you need help. Stop this. Go get help. Go get help. One That's question on, him. on Shreveport, how that ended was, he said that, you know, and that wasn't Shreveport. That was after Shreveport. Yeah, after Shreveport. Was I was just on the way about. trying to get back yeah. to the situation. But I got to ask about um, Shreveport before we get to, you know, the, the barbershop and stuff Man, like that. And then we can go back in on the gun situation again. Yeah, that's where I'm at. So okay. with the gun situation, um, my only thing is for you, there are some times to where when uh, you see a toxic relationship and you're, let's say, a third wheel on this road Correct, trip. correct. Yeah. I uh, inv time? invited me as a guest. Yeah. Hey, you want to go to like, I'm literally a third wheel here. All right. Yeah, let's go. Oh, no. and, and we watched the lives and you were there having a good time. The, you know, the girls. The How did I meet Jaguar? She just said, hey, so like, come over come here, on. come over here. Come with. And I'm in the live and I'm in the, her in the live and we cool. And she starts singing and the whole world says, you need to, you Jaguar are amazing. It, no, and it, to it, me, it was amazing. And then the next day we, we in Louisiana. And then, so I have to ask, at the point of when it all went to, to when it just went bad, was there a time where like, you felt like, not saying an instigator, but there's times where you should like, I should have just maybe been quiet versus voicing my opinion about Never. the matter. Never. Because it was a thing where he said, you I'll were saying, you like you were telling him, hey, bro, you need to just maybe get out. You need to leave. You need to chill. You need to, you're telling him what he needs to do. And him and Jag maybe need to, we need to get like me and Jag and you need to get over here. Me and her, we're good. You get over there. Only time I would do that was when I asked to, just to talk with him alone. Or I asked her, I'd be like, hey, give me a minute. Let me talk to him. Let me get this. Because she's kicking him out the car every two seconds. Get the fuck out my car. Get the fuck out my car. She's, this is what she's doing. Don't ask me what I'm overstepping at any point. Because why? I'm silent the whole time. That's my answer to your question. What? I'm being quiet. I'm watching. Yeah, you don't get I'm no, I, do you know what I just came out of? Do you know what kind of life I've lived for 27 years? I, I don't even really care that much. This is already done. I don't have to do nothing. I'm expecting their relationship to be over at any point. I'm not knowing how Jaguar, how deeply she's committed and connected and how long she's actually been going through this with her family. By the time I meet her son and her mother and I find out this has been a long-term thing and her son and her mom are calling me for help, I know something's bigger at a certain point than it just me, her, Goomba. Goomba, to me, 
I don't really care what he says because I feel like that you're you're talking to a, a child. I'm, I don't care to decipher through lies and truth when it comes to him. I really don't because I know he needs help, period. What he's doing to people in life and his perspective on the people in his life that he loves is very confused. And he wants to become a spiritual himself. He wants to go to, he wants to do that himself. And I, I'm not going to tell him he can't. All I know is that it's going to be very difficult to send any woman who needs help to a man like that. All right, so let's do it like this. I just want to kind of get to where Saturday comes into play. And um, again, I was in a communication with Jack uh, to, you know, get back. And, you know, we're talking about Monday. And like, mind you, you know, we're trying to do the production of our podcast and kind of go from there. And then, mind you, me and you were just linked up the week before Ooh, yeah, Monday just, to man. do the podcast. We are, yeah. So we're, you know, everything's technically happening good until Shreveport on the way back. And then Saturday happens at the barbershop. I just want you to tell your perspective of that scenario as far as what was your intentions, what Correct. was your goal to ride Correct. with Jaguar, and what was your out, you know, outlook on the whole did situation. Did Jaguar ever get to speak on this? She did, yes. Okay, I don't know what she said, but I'm going to tell y'all what we did that day. Because I'm sitting in the car with my bag with just a couple outfits, like paying only attention to what we're doing today. Because I'm not like, I got no time to, all, my time to give away. I'm like thinking we doing stuff. I'm ready to get back here. I do different things that, but I'm noticing everything going crazy. This is the day after that. Now, now, what will we be going to do this day? Oh, we got so many other, so much more business and other plans. And me and Jag is doing that. I'm not at liberty to put here, but yeah, we were in business in other ways that he's aware of too. And this isn't, this isn't like anything separate uh, uh, to uh, where he's separated out of it. This is literally for me and her family, me and members of her family, for me to be a part of that and to facilitate something we wanted to do. So it's like everywhere that we're doing business, it's literally separating me from what they got going on anyway. So that's why a lot of the things I say about him are cap. By the time we get to this point, me and her, we sit in here, we go to the, uh, the military bar. I don't know what it's called. We go to the military bar. She talks about it a lot, but yes. Yeah, we chilling in there. I'm having a drink. Uh, we have she had a drink. It was a great time. We went there because Goomba had already been threatening us, and I don't know what we told y'all what happened the night before, but we was oh I don't know what what's known. Yeah. Oh yeah. shit! Again. Hold on, yeah. I gotta go to the night before. Yeah, go to the night before. Go to the night. Because by the time it's Saturday at the police at the barber shop, me and her are going off of no sleep, maybe one hour of rest, two hours of sleep at this point. After after trying to leave Shreveport, this motherfucker's torture, bro torture we've been up for like 36 hours what do y'all sleep at if you don't mind me asking no, we've been in a car driving around the whole time the whole time or in the house with this dude pulling the gun out in the house running up and down the neighborhood with the gun talking about i'm gonna kill myself once y'all leave i'm gonna kill myself i'm gonna kill them i'm gonna, kill, I'm gonna, I'm gonna shoot myself in front of you in front of your son and your, and your mom so they can see that and they can be traumatized for life She's, he's doing this, he's saying this, he's doing this on purpose. I don't give a fuck what the fuck they talking about, what's going on for, in their perspectives. The reality of the situation is actually pretty dire to the point to where I'm glad it's ended how it's ended. I'm glad my name has been exonerated from all of the, me having a bad influence and now everybody realizing that Goomba is a toxic person, period. Look at how he's responding to the marriage and look what he keeps doing to the woman that he loves and his wife when she's perfectly sane. Only reason he get, keep getting her put in there is because she do have a bad way of conducting herself with the police. Do you know who Jaguar is? Do you know where she come from? Do you know what kind of people she fought in her youth? For what reasons? She don't care about no badge. It's respect. And when, she, when things are messed up for her, she, I don't believe she approaches and heals things the right way at all. From her relationship to dealing with the police and things like that, but you know what? Her heart is pure, her heart is golden. And if she had a solid support, and so, a solid team around her. Maybe she really had a man that would support her. No, she she would do amazing, amazing, amazing. Do you know who, bro? I spent one one or two days with her where she finally gets to. Is it, is it recording? Can we record? Oh, play that. All of this comes out first take, and I got the it's the it's hits just on my laptop just because she just wanted to express herself in one moment. And this was the second time I met her, and this is when I liked her. This is when we were cool, because I was like, now I understand you cool. In the rush to run that back, the re I found out why she was drained the first day I didn't like her. It's because she had she told me the day I met her, the reason I didn't like her was because she was just up like super late being drained by this dude right before they get to the house. They get to the house and I met them in the pretense I met them, come to find out that all the energy I met them on was fake. From this dude Goomba, fake ass energy, because 
I'm not knowing he just verbally abused the shit out of her for hours right before they got there. I didn't know that. That's why she's sitting there all, all like drained. And I've been in a car with him. He will not stop for hours. And me and her are just like, oh my God, smoking. Just like, and he's just anything. If he's not silent, it could be just the smallest thing. And it's, if it comes out, it's snappy, it's fast, it's disrespectful, it's loaded with cuss words, loaded with emotions and threats, anything. This is a cancer male. These are, very, these are your murderers of the world. No offense to cancer males out there, but y'all sensitive. Y'all sensitive. <laughs> y'all sensitive. Hey, tell us about Embrace Leos. It. Huh? <laughs> Embrace it. No, we don't know about Leos. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, no, Leos. Yeah. Do you that. feel like your life is in danger? Do I feel like my life is in danger? Yes. No. Okay. No, I believe I'm protected. This is where they get back to being spiritual. The type of protection that I have is beyond like anything that I've ever been able to comprehend. I'm only getting bits and pieces of the type of protection that I've had in my journey, especially from, from what I've been through and what I've dealt with. I mean, to the, the point of full clips emptied on me, to the point to where, you know, just everybody else around me, to the point to where I'm hurling down a mountain in a one-ton van for over two minutes Damn. with no breaks, no emergency breaks, nothing. And we somehow land at the edge of a cliff right before we go out the cliff, somehow crash into a house and stop right there. Damn, what country? No, was I'm that? protected, bro. <laughs> what state was that? Where were uh, you? I was at? in Panama. I, I'm about to say, what country was that? Sound like boys. That was Panama. Bad boys yeah, very, too. Very um, crazy. Yo, that's my life. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> so, so, so I have to ask There's you, man. Explosions, baby. No, I have to ask you, man. Uh, Goomba really wanted to like fight you. What do you feel? Was it about you that made him really want to just? We're gonna go back to the bar. The military yeah, yeah, bar. Yeah, 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 yeah. So back at the military bar, me and her are there after he's walking up and down, in and out the house. We tired as hell. Walking up and down, she's trying to get a haircut. She really do want to get a haircut. We're really trying to plan to get a haircut because we, about to, we want to all get together and go to an event. We want to go do something together. You know, for, just want to do so and so we're trying to mend everything with him. Everything me and Jag are doing is me kicking it with Sam, getting, noticed, getting to know Sam. Her like getting certain things together so if we can proceed like on our next expedition because we don't know what's gonna happen. Stop at the house, prepare everything. We're hoping like he's there. We know he's there. We're waiting to see him. He's mad walking around with a gun, hoodie in, this and that, smoking everything and anything. Like just saying, it's just, it's, I actually have a record. I recorded it on my phone just because it was so much negativity. He was so volatile there. I thought I said it was gonna fight any minute. I thought it was gonna be violence in the house any minute. So I actually recorded it on my phone but I ended up deleting it later because I was going through my own thing. Like, I want nothing to do with that stuff. Like, all kind of things like that. And I was, it was under the guise of me and Sam just talking. I'm trying to keep Sam cool. Sam, Sam being Jack's husband. Jag, I mean, Jack's son, Jag's for son, those who don't know. Correct. Yeah, and he's, very, he's a very sensitive mind. So as I'm walk, talking with Sam, I'm trying to, like, get him into his passion and his flow. He's telling me, showing me his art. We're going into the art. We're developing art plans. While there, he is just saying the most evil things to his wife. And this is his mother, and his, and her mother is right in the other room, and she's just like, I don't, now I know how she is because I talked to her. She's like, oh my god, we are not safe. We gotta get out of here. If I'm not safe, Jag ain't safe. Sam ain't safe. Uh, Jag's mom ain't safe. There's a lot of people who ain't safe. If 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 I ain't safe because Goomba don't like me, I mean, look what he do to his wife. I'm not worried about that. I'm not worried about him. Whatever he got going on, he's his own worst enemy. He should really be, you know protecting himself from what he's done because the truth has a funny way of showing up regardless of who. So ultimately, I mean, the energy that he's put out is, go is coming back to him in his life. And it just, I don't want to put that on it. I'm just saying like, I'm just saying like, Jaguar about to come up and blow up like on some Job stuff. Like, oh, yeah. look like she lost everything, but bro, she's, no. And there's always a second, a third, I, even a third coming. I walked with um, her, and I know that she's literally like, it's cool to say that, second and third coming. Like, yeah. I'm like, I walked with her. Uh, to see that her heart is pure. And you, so. I trust my kids around her. Yeah, no, no, definitely. And going into, like, again, you're trying to mend things. Even Saturday, oh, it looks like you're trying to bar. mend things still. It looks like, it looks like it's, it's we, not, we, we're, we're going we're, to we're mend things. We're calling him to meet up with us. We're yeah. telling him, we're calling him to meet up with us. He's blowing up the phone with all kinds of threats and negativity, whatever. Even my phone. He would blow my phone up ridiculously, and I answer and I'd be like, bro, it's cool. We're friends. Stop. Did you forget? Like, did you forget this? I'm just trying. But he ain't hearing that. He's like a robot. He's just like, 
you can't even hear. And so it's like, all right. But I do it just to let them know I love them, and I'm not gonna ignore them. I don't. I feel like if somebody needs that much help, ignoring them, being like, man, fuck this thing. Bro, he needs help. Like he's not sane. It's like, it, it is. It is actually it did become quite sensitive once I learned about his conditions. And I see why Jag was in it for so long because it's like no one's ever gonna really help Gloomer the way he really needs it, from what from our perspectives, and from what's going on. Like, she was really attached to helping him to where we're at the VA. We're waiting to get. We're trying to get drinks. We want to meet up with him. We're asking him to meet us there because we don't want him to be able to wild out. If he's there, he's gonna act. And he's going to control himself okay. for that moment. He will. And we know that. He wouldn't come. And uh, Goomba, uh, of course, he spoke on what he was going through his mind. Again, I know you didn't watch the interview, but he spoke on what was going on. But as we It was saw safe for us at the VA, yeah. spots, basically, as, is what we did that for. As y'all pull up, he was walking, of course, you know, getting to the barbershop. This is after the gun in our yeah, face. Yeah, this is after everything. all that. And, and we're still fucking with this And nigga. again, I will say this. Again, and you're in, just to speak to you and what we're seeing, because Jaguar goes live. Everything is to men things at that moment. And I just want to ask you this because everybody can go watch and they've seen the video of what happened and kind of you pulling up and making sure the phone's recording and holding Jack's phone and just making sure that everyone's protected. And none of that was planned what happened. Yeah, it, 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 it doesn't look right. It's like, we're just, know. We're, we're here. Yeah. Jack, you're there with her. I can't, you know, you're giving us the inside story, but again, we understand now why you're with her because it is to men things. Um, mm -hmm. Goomba, of course, is still upset. They go in there, there's an argument. Um, Our whole focus is meeting up with him. The yes. whole time we're driving around is getting her a haircut and meeting up with him. He ends up, um, of course, slight argument. She comes out. He goes out the back side, comes out running. He, of course, wants to, he wants to tangle with you because, you know, he's hyped up to do it. Um, That's all cap. Not that even, that even, it's not even how okay, it happens. Okay, so, yeah, no, please, because, again... I know you didn't watch this interview, but he's like, he's his on main the phone. goal was to get to you for something. He's on the phone with my friend Shaka. Shaka's trying to calm him down. Shaka's, he's over here premeditating all of this. He's on the phone with Shaka. Shaka trying to get him to calm down and get him to stop all of this shit. How do I know this, right? After all this, Shaka told me, he said, yo, I was on the phone with him the whole time. And then all of a sudden, it's all here. <laughs> he was on the phone with him the whole time. While this was all going down, I'm on the live. I got this going on. I'm not knowing none of this is happening. Me and Jaguar are getting out. We've been waiting to meet with him to talk to him. To talk to him. We get there. We already had some drinks at the VA. Jag was a little more amped and her energy was higher. She, gets, she parks the car, gets out the car. And she's right there. She's like, where he at? Where he at? He wants to talk. He wants me here. I'm here. Where he at? And she's feeling, she's, I think she's doing this because we both felt like, it's already like, bro's a threat. It's already a threat. We're not looking to fight him, but we're expecting that from him. We get there, it gets to the point to where he come running. We don't know where he is, we're looking for him. He comes running from down the street. We're looking for him for the barbershop. We in the barbershop looking for bro. He come from running up the street, charging at us. Not me, her. Him and her start fighting. They're not fighting me. He's not fighting me. It's her, she's fighting him. They're and these motherfuckers is letting this shit happen. They just sit and they watching it like it's cool in the, in the, in the, in the barbershop. And I ended up going in the barbershop and saying, y'all niggas wrong for that shit. You all know that's wrong for that shit. You letting this family tear itself apart and y'all know that. And y'all all wrong. I went in there and told all of them niggas. And I felt like I was in danger then because I felt like they was gonna come out and kill me. I really did because I went in there so bold, so angry. You know, like y'all niggas whack for that. Like that was not cool. All of y'all know that I was wrong. Never let that happen again. Never turn on your family. Never do this. I went in there and said all that to them with the risk of, of one of them being some guy I don't want to mess with, which is probably all of them. You know what I'm saying? And, and ultimately, when me and him did have an altercation is because I wanted to get into it. When I'm seeing him fight her and nobody doing nothing, I wanted to get into it at this point. And I did. I did go closer to intervene. And at this point, he's, he, we're, he's grappling me. And as he's grappling me, we're not fighting, we're not punching. We're not, nobody's punching each other, we're not punching each other, we're holding, he's holding me, doing the grapple thing. And I'm taking this as an opportunity to talk to him. And I'm holding him, I'm grabbing him at his waist, like not even here, not even there. And I'm holding him firmly, but not squeezing him, not hurting him so he knows. And I'm like, remember, hey bro, I love you. We're family, I love you bro. I love you, we need help, this ain't it. This ain't it, don't fight your family bro. Stop fighting your family, don't do that. We love you, we love you. And that's all I'm telling him during the whole time. At this time, he starts punching me on the side, just a little bit because I feel like people run, but he wasn't hitting me hard. So I'm like, he hears me. And I feel like he hears me and it gets to the point to where 
Now I have nothing assault on him. They get out. The police figure everything out. They the police are here now. He's calling the police trying to get them to arrest Jaguar, which they do because she's resisting arrest. That's why they arrested her. She was being so resistant. She wasn't doing what they told her to. I was there. She's a rebel. How the long have you known Guba since before you met him? How long did you know him? Never. So, okay. The, yeah, days and weeks before this incident. Literally, like, what was it, like, a week? Okay. Like so, a good week. And this was a deep ass, for a deep week from the beginning. Okay, so outside look in, I would say, are y'all really family? So the reason the family comes up is because of everything we're doing while we're together is all for family. So we're literally making moves. Our entire trip was all business family oriented. Everything we're doing, that's the pretense to everything. So that's a great question. Everything we're doing is for Sam, for her mother, for, for him, the future. And she's very well aware of my love for Velvet. And she has daughters. And she, she's aware that I had, um, she's aware of a lot of different things that I had going on with children in my life to where she wants to give me a setup. And we worked certain things out. If we did certain things, we had certain things I'm not gonna talk about tell because that's really private business, cool stuff we had going on. But she was on a whole family vibe to where she's really doing a lot for me. Like, I wish I could tell y'all everything she was blessing me with and giving me to where I'm just there. And I'm like, are you serious? I'm just like a child receiving a gift in the car. Like, but all the drama, I didn't incite it. I didn't step into it. I didn't enforce it. So, but I dealt with it when it came to my doorstep. Okay, so. And if I was there, I would mitigate certain things. I would be like, hey, hold up. Like, let's talk about that. You just said that to her mean, like, why are you hurt? And he'll go into it. And it was actually very active. It was very, uh, um, what's the word, productive. Yeah. Okay. It was. So after the gun, him showing the gun, what made you get back in the car? After? Oh, shit. So me and her together, we sitting here at the bridge. We about to call an Uber. I got everything worked out. I got everything. I'm like, I got everything. I'm walking like a hermit crab with bags. Like, I don't know if y'all ever seen Labyrinth. I was like the old lady in Labyrinth. Yeah. With everything on me, like, up there, like, we good, Jack, don't worry. I'm not going to leave at this point because I've seen what just happened. Um, she's telling me, you know, we're done. We're done with that. We're not doing that no more. We're going to find another way to get to move forward. She's no more, none of that. I, she said, I, last time I told him, that's the last time he pointed a gun at me. If he ever pointed a gun at me ever again, then it's over. And I told him that. And he just did it. He just did it again. And so it got to the point to where we're, we're sitting there, we're waiting for a ride, but it was, like, so far from anything it's going to take like a minute for Uber to pull up, like 30 minutes or something. We're about to hitchhike. Damn near. We're about to go out there with our thumbs up. Real talk. Because there's a better chance. Uh, we're at the spot we're at, there's just nothing there. Right. And so we talk about it, and we're like, he's in the car with that gun. He just left. He just threatened to kill himself multiple times. You seem sane. We're outside the car. We're like, bro, we both like are here. We're both present. Like... Let's go help him out. Let's go home. Let's go home. We Let's go, go back home. to the car. Hey, I go talk to him again. Like, hey, it's cool. We love you. We just want to get home. We just want to go home. This and that, this and that. It's all cool. We can deal with everything there. We can get the medication when we get home. We can all be cool again. This, this and that. It's all good. We love you, bro. Boom. We put this stuff back in the car. We leave. Me and her under the pretense that we're doing this for him. We're, we don't want him to hurt himself. And I'm at a point to where I like, I don't give a fuck. And I'm at a point to where I hope I don't have to hurt him. And I'm thinking every two seconds as I see this gun, I'm like, it's too easy. And like, oh, he's too easy to take it from where I ain't gonna cap. Like, it's always just there. He has it out all the time and he doesn't pay attention. He in the back, again, we, the reason we got home was because we asked him if, when we got back in the car, is if the condition was he sits in the back seat, Jaguar drives, I sit in the front seat. Mm. And... You just do it like that. Mm, okay. He went in the back seat and he, 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 he accepted it. He went back there and he went to sleep. He got some rest. He was very stressed out. It was hours and hours and hours. He went to sleep. And we driving him. He driving him. He's sleeping the whole time. We get home. There you go. He's sleeping. And the gun is sitting right there on his lap. Uh, it fell on the floor a couple of times and everything. I even picked it up and like put it down. Like, this is crazy. Like, <laughs> like I'm like, yo, because if he wakes up without it, then he's going to be even more like, ah. Yeah, you like, got me. This shit crazy, bro. Like, so, so anyway, I, so you I know. gotta ask you, um, 
I'm glad yeah. we love him. I'm glad we, we I, you know what I'm saying? I'm glad it was love on our end. No, of course, without question. I mean, again, I, I don't think nothing was ever malicious. And no, I don't know him or Jaguar enough to be all like, that's my family. Yeah, that's my family. I just met them. The vibe was so real and organic, though, that it was okay to say. It was. And if we keep saying that moving forward, it's going to be the same vibe we met with. So I have to ask, um, it was on live where we seen Jaguar uh, grab her son's ashes and then proceed to rub them on her face. And then we see you come in the picture. Mm -hmm. Just give me. What did y'all see? All right. So we saw Jaguar, of course, get back in the car upset about, you know, what just took place. Uh, Correct. Taking her son's ashes, rubbing on her face and started placing curses on everyone in the barbershop. Correct. And saying she's going <laughs> to, on her son, she's going to make sure that they, Death you know. Death on all y'all. Yeah. All y'all need. And then that's what we saw. And that. then basically the, the ashes. And we knew Jaguar rides with her son's ashes again. Uh, her her son uh, Giovanni. Um, uh, we, we we knew this, right? Well, I well, didn't let me know say, this. No, let me say this. I personally knew that. I don't think the world knew that, so that's why it's like. But it was well, serious. Yeah, it's like, well, you, you, there's not an urn where you keep it on a mantle, but again, Jaguar moves around, so she keeps it with her. But yeah. did you first? I, my, my question is, did you know that was her son Ashes when you came back to the car? And secondly, we seen you say something, and then you were off camera, but you were saying something and doing something. When you seen that happening, where she was rubbing something on her face, correct. What what did you see? What 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 was in your perception of what was going so on? So I noticed a lot of snipped videos of this on live, but I, I I knew it was live, and I knew I did this on live, and I did this on purpose because it's actually really big to me, the power of the subconscious mind. So when she did what she did, um, I didn't necessarily know those was her son's ashes immediately, but after I heard them, after I heard him, he's like, "Do you use Gio's ashes? Don't use Gio's ashes?" After I heard him saying that, then I was like, "Oh." These are her loved one's ashes. Okay. And she's grabbing them. She's rubbing her face. I'm going over her to her like, this is after everything. I'm going over to her like, it's cool. Like, let's go. Let's get out of here. Let's just leave. We're done with this. Let's go. Let's just go. And um, the police are coming. Like, I'm aware of the police. All the police are coming. I'm like, let's get the fuck out of here. We've been drinking. This isn't that. It's not looking good. Let's get out of here. And so she has the ashes and she's rubbing it. She's ignoring me. She's seeing right past. She's seeing red. You know, as they say, and she's like looking in there, like fuck all you, all you, all death and all y'all. She's grabbing all that, and I'm like not knowing that. I'm like, I take the ashes, and I'm like, no, 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 you can't do that. No, love, love, more life on everybody, consciousness, wish consciousness on everybody, love, love, love. And I, I took the ashes, and I was taking the one she had, and I'll, and I'll get it, and I'll do what she was doing with it. She would, she'll grab it, and she'll blow it, and she'll rub everything else on her face. I did the same thing. And so, but I did it in the name of love. And I felt like it was very important, very spiritual. And I feel like she appreciated that, like subconsciously, like whether anybody knows or anything like that, she, I don't think she'll ever, she, she's never had a problem with me since. She was like, hey, why did you do that? I was trying to curse and kill him. She ain't do, hit me with that. It was like, I put, I wanted to put something back on that spirit. If that's what that was. If I'm not spiritual like that, but I feel like if you're going to play with that shit, I'm going to do it in a way to where it doesn't come back on us. Right. In me, I'm not doing. I'm. You see know what I'm saying? So, yeah. That's what happened. That's what actually happened. No, definitely understandable. Um, and of course, just to you know, and she stopped. She did calm down. Bring from Jag that. to a full circle. Um, she ended up going to, uh, uh I guess you could call it mental, mental hospital, institution. Yeah. Mental institution. Um, uh, she stayed there for about a week. She got out. She brought um, Legina Holt uh, down to Dallas. Um, I believe uh, her and Goomba, again, I don't know the current situation at this exact moment, but of course they had, you know, a split and they're falling out uh, based on, you know, Le with Legina. Yeah. I just want you, what, have you communicated with her since that time when she went to the hospital? I don't know nothing about no Legina. Yes. I okay. talked to her, Sam, um, them. we're good. We're good. We're good as we have always been. We just wish Goomba would stop acting like how you're acting, but you know, I don't care to bring him back as a friend. I don't care for that. I don't care to bring him back in our lives. I'm not looking for that. You see what I'm saying? But we never had an issue. We've always accepted him and all the bullshit that came with him. And the, the whole agenda Holt situation, you haven't been involved in that. I don't even that. know who that is. Okay. I ain't going to care what you like. I, and I've been hearing that a lot. And people have been saying like, bro, everybody says you're doing witchcraft, but it's her. And I'm like, dude, whatever. I looked into it one time. I looked at it. I'm like, she looks like somebody who's just been using the internet for whatever reasons. I don't know. I have no opinion about her or what's going on. I don't know why Jags do it. I don't know what their connection is because people didn't know what, what we had going on. Exactly. So how do I know what they really got going on? All I know is that the bad habit that she does have that I've shared before is investing so much of your energy into other people's lives. 
to the point to where you're, you've neglected your own to a detriment. You're not even being you anymore, but you're just trying to help this person and help that person in a form of like redemption. But it's like, bro, yeah, Jag, sure. like Jag, get back to the music, like get back in the studio, like real talk. Like she, to me, Jaguar is still like a modern day superstar if she would embrace it. I really, I really believe that, but it's been support and everything around her that's been lacking. And that's just a piece of that. No, definitely. And uh, I feel a thousand people feel exactly how you feel as far as in regards to what, how people put themselves in other people's lives. Yeah. Um, so let's go ahead and bring it all the way back, man. There's a moment in there where you said when you met Jaguar, you were going through something yourself. You were already Correct. going through your current situation, your current breakup. And, um, you know, the world knows you prior to the situation with Jaguar as Solar, you know, a former, a former cult member with Carbon Nation. Yes. Uh, uh, wife Velvet? Is it wife? It was it girlfriend? Partner? I mean, what's the yeah, title? You you, 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 I would say, me and her would say, that's my wife okay. at this point. Okay. You know, and um, the other people have seen us in a relationship and they'll call, call it whatever they want to call it to me. That's my wife. That's just how we look at it. On paper, no. This is actually, <laughs> on paper, it, she has her own story, but on paper, I'm actually married and she's married, but we're going through divorces and this is all in connection to that cult. So these are like marriages that should never happen type type thing. Feel me? What What is a wife? We all have the, you know, yeah, good, the, good, the, good one. The conventional term we yeah. know, for the ring and the, the contract. What is a wife? What does that mean to you? What, is, what kind of, what is that supposed to really mean spiritually? So I really don't care for titles. And it's funny, um, this is what I believe in relationships is like, I don't necessarily not believe in polygamy. I don't believe in monogamy. I don't believe in polyandry and, and niganogamy and, and maganigamy. I don't know. Like, I really don't have any set title or belief on relationships or how they should go uh, from heterosexual. To, I, don't have, I don't have a limit on that because I teach what I teach and what I believe in is that if you're in your purpose and you're doing what you're supposed to do in your complete purpose from being yourself and you're surrounded by these people and then this is the type of relationship y'all have, and that's divine in its own right. I ain't got. I don't. Who am I? Right. So if a person, and what you got to tell me your title for? Like y'all just be in your energy and and, and be in your purpose. But that's a long shot for where most people are in life. No, definitely, definitely. So why they chase the titles? They need to chase themselves. That's it. If a so, person uh, sticks their tongue in a dog's mouth every day, what do you call that? It does sound like. Uh, uh, Nasty. Okay, all right. Just I, I just want to see what title you put that on. That. All right. So so, so let's let, let's do it like this. Oh oh, you want the title for that? Yeah. What what title do you? Uh, put? That's dog anagamist. <laughs> okay, I see where we go. I see where we go. I see where we go. So so I have to ask you, man, because I got to understand. You know, I want to get into psychology of it. Um, I'm not fully knowing what the full carbonation thing was um, when yeah. I first met you. Um, uh, someone put me onto that, and then of course I seen you in videos that was part of that, and I was uh, very new to this even existing. Me personally, correct. Yeah. Um, since then, we of course we've seen more and know more, known more Jaguars by the more in our life. Um, I have to, to get your breakdown as far as even where you were at in your life um, that even got you to be introduced to something like and what is carbonation. <sighs> great question. That's a great question. Like I don't feel like people ask that enough. I think uh, everybody we're thinks psychology that they, of it, you know? most people think that they know me because of what they've seen online. You're asking me, who were you before this? Yes. And yes. I don't feel like people ask it enough. And I think if I'm going to put that in a nutshell, is that I've been very depressed as a child, uh, many years of my life. I've moved every single year of my life. I've always looked to have friends and anchor into friends, but never been able to build roots or have like the same friends. Military brat or? Um, actually, my parents were divorced, but um, there's a ton of military in my family that I did grow up with as well. So I ended up living with different family also, like my uncles in the military, you know, um, different things like that. I ended up going through stuff like that too. So, you know, um, for me, like I had a lot of, I was very depressed. I had a lot of goals and aspirations for myself. And I was so active. I was dancing. I was doing music. I was doing acting in this program. I was in that program. I was at ROTC. I did water polo. I did football. I, I did everything. You see what I'm saying? Because I'm just like an active, like lively person. And I'm so deep in the community and my friends, like outside of school, 
everybody's kicking it with me. Like when I leave a city, they'd be like, bro, everybody stopped kicking it. You were the glue. Like the moment you left, like everybody stopped kicking it. Like nobody come outside no more, like stuff like that. And I'll be like, damn. And when I go places, I don't know that because my house is the hub. People can come through whether people, my parents ever knew about it or not. My house was always the hub where after every Friday to Sunday, we, the people from all the different collectives and cliques, they can get together with me. And I've been like that with my whole life. So because of this, I've never had like a color. I've never had a culture. I've never had a class. I've never had any of those things because I'm cool with all of them. And I've lived with all of them. Like I've been in the, in the dirt, you know what I'm saying? And I've been with working with bankers, you know, white people and stuff like that. I've done it all. Like I've done all of that. So me growing up as Jehovah's Witness and then transitioning through multiple religions, I pretty much always had questions. And I never stop asking questions and to the point to where I'm being called the devil. I'm being kicked out of houses, being called a demon. This is as a- You've questioned God in the Bible? No. Well, what would happen is I'll be studying like something like electromagnetism, learning how lights work in something. And then somebody in the house would be um, one of those Bible thumpers who's like, doesn't really understand the Bible, but uses it for everything. And they literally, this is my own family. They had literally kicked me out of the house because I was studying electromagnetism, which is what light is, yeah. and uh, looking, looking, and researching Nikola Tesla. So I'm the de I'm a devil now. I'm a demon. You know, I know astrology. I know I understand how celestial energy works. I know how source code works. I go deep into all kind of metaphysics. You know, um, to where I've asked so many questions. If I ever present these questions or ask the wrong people certain questions, in my youth, I would get a repercussion for that. I wouldn't get an answer. So I get a punishment. And do so you, do you look at life just more from a spiritual standpoint or a scientific standpoint? Well, I see spiritually and scientifically all the time. So like even if I was to go into my own energies, my own astrological energies, I see things for what they are. And I, I see what's unseen. I hear everything you're saying, but I also like know everything you're not saying. Like in, at one instance for me all the time. So as a child, you got to imagine how, how I am like feeling everybody's vibes, how they really feel. It shut me down. It made me very depressed regardless of what was being said over my entire childhood to where actually when I had seen the dude Lee Hill online, who was a cult leader of, um, you know, many names, but had carbonation at one point, many names. Um, I had seen him. I'm like, he knows what I know. He's talking about life after death. You know, he's talking about cells and biology. I love biology. A, so pluses, him on, a pluses in school on that. You like, seen him online first? Yes, I seen a, seen a video of him and it was like, uh, it was a video and he was talking about life after death and he was saying things nobody else says but me. So I'm like, fuck with bro. He's different, yes. And he's saying it proud. He's a black man with a shirt off in the mountains. He's, and the biggest factor to me was I'm like, I'm known as, whoever's seen Fight Club, Y'all seen Fight Club? Yeah. I'm thinking that's the route I have to take. I'm thinking I'm going to have to turn it. Yeah, I'm do, learning about I'm, the world. Yeah, I'm about to go this route. I'm asking questions. I'm like, man, we about to make some fertilizer. Yeah. <laughs> we I about to, I, damn, I'm about to figure it. something out because this is wrong. The system's wrong. But I seen him and I'm like, yo, I don't have to live in the system. I can literally go live in a tropical. I, why didn't I ever think of that? And then I looked at how much it cost. And I'm like, why aren't we already doing this? It's cheap. I'm not knowing these things. I'm knowing only fear. I'm coming from San Diego, California. So I'm like, TJ, Mexico, mafia, you're dead. Mexico equals death. Mexico equals gangs, death, outlaw, never go there, especially if you're colored. And the truth is quite the opposite of that. <laughs> Black people are worshiped in the Americas. It's very interesting to me um, what we were taught versus what the actuality is. And when I started learning this, I just shifted everything from like really being depressed and like kind of giving up on the world and, you know, um, to switching to like, hold on, there's hope. I can just go be happy over here and I can just live in nature. And I'm thinking I'm gonna be butt naked in the jungles every day eating mangoes. That's literally what, what I'm you thinking. Want it? Yes. I did not want anything to do with the system. From where I was at at this point, this was about what, five years ago? From where I was at, I had just started engineering and recording my own music. I just left um, interning for Mike Will I was working in a PBM studio in Marietta, Georgia, and I was, I was working with A+, Plus, Dirty Rock, uh, Ears, a number of people. They, the ones who teach me how to, how to make music, DJ Tukey, I would sit in there do sets 
while he, he practicing his sets. I'll be in there like listening, watching, and then dancing, turning up so he could see how the crowd would react. And I was having a blast, but I was working for free. All I did was keep the whole place clean. I had the keys, everything. I let, I'm letting these niggas in and out. So first time I, when I meet Mike Will, it's a funny story, I'm glad you said this. Um, I literally ended up being cool with everybody, all the producers and everybody there on my, like my second day there. And they all there. And I didn't know that this was Mike Will's studio. I didn't know I was in an ear drummer studio. I didn't know that. Wow. I didn't know 808 wow. Mafia set the studio. I didn't know that. Yeah. So I'm in here just thinking I have an opportunity. And second day, they're all fucking with my vibe. They're all feeling my energy. Like, who are you, dude? Like, who are you? Like, and I'm like, uh, I'm just answering, like, oh, you got a rap name? You want to rap? You want to make music? Like, what do you want to do? I'm like, yeah, I had a rap name in high school. They used to call me Cali Prince. And they're like, oh, boo, that's lame, that's lame. I'm like, yo, am I getting roasted right now? My cousin right here roasting me, uh, blessed. I just want to rolly, rolly, rolly. Yeah, rolly yeah. Right. Uh, my homie Tariq, he cool as hell. He, he was, they, these, these hits did not exist yet. Nah, you know, and um, A Plus right there, you know, uh, Mike Will right there. Um, Really cool scene. There's another, uh, some other people in, the, in uh, my man Sean uh, was in there, and I remember I'm I'm sitting here and they they making fun of that name for like two for like thirty seconds, and I'm like, damn, feeling like some heat. I'm feeling like, but then Tyreek was like, hey, you know what you should call yourself, bro? You should call yourself Solar, and I was like. So everybody's like, yeah, yeah, so like, yeah. He's like, yeah, because your energy touches everybody. I'll never forget that moment. And that's, that's when they amazing. gave me the name Solar. And then A Plus right across from me, um, he's the one who did that, that song, you know, with the baby, with Loop. And um, it's like someone else in there. Um, but he, he, he produced that track. He produced a, a J. Cole's in that song. Yeah. Loop, the baby, uh, J. Cole. Yeah, he produced yeah. that song. He produced a lot of other different things. But um, he's the one, he said, find a cool way to spell it. So I'm like, I bet, S-O-U-L-A-R. I knew right there in the instance. And I said, and they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and ever dope. since then, I, I went in the studio. They had me get the markers. I wrote my name big on the door between Studio A and B right there, Solar, and black, red, and, and right. Cause I'm like, I'm gonna come back and make a mark. This last part, I'm gonna land this plane, right? Mike Will, this, they leaving, Mike leaving. Everybody in the house there, cause obviously nobody gonna leave on Mike there. So Mike leaving. <laughs> First, the Maserati right outside, I got the keys, so I got, oh, I got you. I go open the door, I'm standing at the door, I'm like, all right, all right, all right, man. Like, I, no, I didn't say anything, I just opened the door. I'm a nobody, right? So I just opened the door, he walking by, he stopped. I see the gun, he got his gun now, he got his glasses on, he's in there, he, he, he stopped, he look at me like, hey, man, you really seem like somebody who I need to know. And I was like, you gonna see me again? And mind you, I'm not making no music at this time. I'm not even an artist at this time. I've never made a beat. Now I'm like one of the best producers I know. You know I got a sang song with Jaguar Wright. Me and Jaguar Wright making music together now. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? People don't know me and don't know my story. They don't know that once I pop back up, like the things that I can do and what I'm actually connected to on the back and I just haven't used these things yet. So like I chose to extinguish all of that and go extremist and I threw all that in the trash and went to the jungle, yeah, bro. What the fuck, man? OD spiritual. Mind you, I had just got a $5 million contract with another guy working with a dude named Jackson Wayne, Korean dude, who coming out here to make some American music. I got a deal as a producer, and my passport came in at the same time. And I was like, fuck that money. That's the devil. If I take that money, I'm going to die anyway. So it was the contract and the passport, and you see the option between yes. the two. And I was like, I'm and getting out of this wait, you, system. This is coming from years of depression. I don't care yeah, about I say, yeah, I've been, I've been rich. Most people want the life that you're about to see over here with those been guys there. with. Been there already from earlier years of my life. And now you chose. People don't know that. I, I choose freedom. Yes. Wow. I've already been there. I've had all the money. I've had, I smoke gold, 24K gold blunts every day. I done had <laughs> trash bags full of weed by my feet with the newest systems and the newest laptops and everything. And I had all that already. I lived my have own spot, Vegas, all that stuff. Like I did all that already. It, it comes quick, it goes quick, and it doesn't mean anything. And I got most depressed when I had the most, we when I had the most wealth. That's some real shit. Yeah. So when you made it to the other side, yeah, was it everything you thought it would be? Yes. No, no, no. Scratch that. Fuck that. No. And this is why. When I got to the tropics, yes. You felt the vibe. I seen the area, all the energy, the food. Yeah, 100%. Even when I get there, I'm like, it looks good. It looks good. My disposition was that I just finished listening to this dude, Moose's album, 
on repeat for like eight days. And this nigga is like, not, not that long. I'm exaggerating, but I'm listening. But for this trip of me going from the States to Mexico, I'm listening only to this album, though, for real, for real. And it's just like, it's, it's, I'm listening to it over and over and over again. And it's just like really good music. Like realistically, it's like a lot of it had really, really good messages in it. Um, but by the time I get there and, I'm, and I meet the dude, and it's cool. The next day, the guy whose music I was listening to, he got a backpack on talking about, I'm about to leave. I'm like, hold up, I just got here off of your album. I brought my computer to make your music. And you want to leave? I'm not understanding like that there's drama going on that, that you know I don't know about here. I'm thinking that these guys are angels. I'm thinking these guys are all like, you know, just heaven sent. And I'm thinking by the time I get there, I'm with them guys. I'm with the elites. I'm with the people they know, the knowledge they're talking about for real, for real. Man, I get there. These people don't know. No, they don't know knowledge like that. Is Elihio knows knowledge? I know knowledge. I'm going there like, y'all lame. Hold up. This is my first thing I said to him. I'm like, hold up. Y'all lame as hell. Because I just finished listening to all your music and now you're about to leave? Hold on, man. Like, you guys don't know the knowledge. Y'all don't know what's really going on. I didn't fuck with him after that. Um, and I was basically got up. The dude, the cult leader, he said, look, man, you're right, but they don't know you right now. They don't respect you right now. Save that for later. And I pretty much just sat down. And I started to bite my tongue from there moving forward. But I was already not fucking with like the people because I felt like I thought they were going to be these super righteous elite people and they ended up being regular people. And it made me like I felt played in that sense. But I was okay with it. After, after a while, I was cool with it because he was still there and I was still there. We still going to take off. And bigger than that, I actually didn't really care to even join their group. How that happened, it happened when I was already going to Mexico to be on my own with my own tribe. Right. They ended up inviting me in the process of me doing my own thing. So and I went out of an invitation. Paint the picture for me real quick. What, how many members were there of Carbon Nation at the time of your arrival? And also, what was Carbon Nation to you as you Sheesh. pulled up to it? I thought, there was gonna, I thought that Carbon Nation was actually going to be like hella people. Because I'm not knowing the time zones. I'm not knowing they're in Costa Rica here. They're in Belize here. They're in Mexico here. And they're here. I ain't know that. I don't know where they be at. So... I'm actually thinking from the past scene that it's hella guys. Like it's a bunch of guys. I'm about to have brothers. I'm about to have, you know, friends. It's, I'm not thinking about the women like that. I'm getting a bunch of girls. I'm really not. I'm like, I'm about to have brothers. I've always wished for brothers. I have one older sister. And I've always That's wished right. to have brothers. Never had a brother. So I'm like, I have stepbrothers. And ever since I knew it's like that brother, so I always want to have brothers again. And I'm okay with them not being my actual blood. So I'm thinking that it's going to be these dude, this dude Azul is going to be there. This guy Tron is going to be there. I think all these guys are going to be there. They're not, they're not there. I didn't know that. Um, there's other people there who's there. I'm not, I'm, cause I'm not doing the drama research. I'm just literally watching videos about knowledge and then just resonating on that, mastering astrology, teaching myself astrology. That's it. And, you know, I get there and that's there. And it's funny because what Elihio ended up doing, the cult leader, is he ended up ranking me up so high in the group so fast. That I actually I see how that was a good move like for me to stay because now I'm in a position to get everybody else right. So now everybody kind of becomes my responsibility, and I love that. And you know because Why did you, rank I, you, up so you can fast? trust me for that, huh? Why did you rank you up so fast? Do you feel? Because it is what it is. Like I run things when I go yeah, there. Yeah, I say was it your mindset? Was it technology? Was it your knowledge? Because again, you come from an engineering. Background. I feel like he knew that. I feel like he knows that. I, I feel like he knows that I'm not stupid. And most everybody else around him is very, very naive. And the only people who was not naive, for real, who wasn't stupid, who he peeped out early, was me uh, and, and his wife, Velvet. He knew that we couldn't play with us. You know, it got to that point. And, and he never, he actually didn't disrespect me. Actually, the only time I let that rank go was because there's an older gentleman there, 30 years old, 30-something uh, 30 30 something years old. He was already in the military and everything, and I'm going, getting up every day telling this nigga what to do. And I'm like, 20, was it five years ago? Remind us, what, what age were you at the time? I'm like 23, 24. And I'm like having, bro, no, I'm actually, what? what I'm like 23, 22, yeah, 23, 22. And um, I'm, I'm telling these grown ass men, this grown ass man what to do. I'm telling all these other adults and men what to do, how to work out, how to clean this right, come back, fix that, do this, do that, like get up at this time. I'm getting everybody together. We're bonded. 
energy's flowing right, everything. But there's this one older dude named True always had to argue things because he's an older dude. And I always beat him publicly. So it was even worse. And it got to the point where me and Alihio, we, we kind of talked and said, hey man, let's just give him the rank. Just put him right above you from now on because he's older and he needs it. Me and him agreed. We did that. And ever since then, I don't know what True's thought this whole time, but ever since then, me and True's been like equals. You know what I mean? I'm just curious. What was the living arrangement? Like, what was the setup? What was the... Because they... You know, I know Carbonation was moving throughout, but every time y'all go spot to spot, where is the... Like... What, so, I was it, the realtor. Yeah, like, yeah. I was, saying, I yo, was the realtor. You're looking that's, for spots with how many rooms, with, with how much bro, space? I say this, bro. I'd be like, I was the chief of Carbonation. Not only do I own it, I owned it on paper, like, towards the end. Like, I own it on paper. I didn't even get to use it because there's so many conflicts with actually him making use of even that the right way. You feel me? So it's like so many issues, but I'm, I'm getting the houses. I'm making all the connections. I, everybody is in my phone to this day and we're still cool from all of these years. Why? Because they never had a connection with him. They always had a connection with me. It was never with him. I was the media guy. I'm the pub, public representative guy. I represent everybody. So I'm pretty much was basically the chief of the shit because why? He's just sitting at home living off it like a fat rat. Me, on the other hand, me and the other guys, we're getting together, putting our minds together, finding these different properties. We're finding these $5 million properties, $7 million properties. Like we're finding them on purpose. We're like looking for like the best spots. And I'm getting on the phone with these people. And I'm turning $8,000 rent into 2,500 a month off of leveraging information. I'm leveraging information. I'm leveraging knowledge about Crypto, the markets, the world, when you're going to be getting this type of influx on this. We can Airbnb that. We could do this. We could do that. So I'm able to work things out. And I'm doing this Panama, multiple houses. I'm doing this in Mexico, multiple properties. We're going to build, get a village, village in Mexico. I actually had just did that. Did a nice trip on that one. I had uh, go to uh, Hawaii. We was doing Hawaii. We did Hawaii. Um, Costa, what did we do? Not Costa. I never did Costa Rica. I went through Costa Rica, Panama. What's the name? Of, I'm forgetting. Nicaragua. Oh, Nicaragua. I'm looking you, kind of jealous of us. And, and I mean, we're not always getting the best spots. I'm telling you, like sometimes, oh, we're, getting, sometimes we're getting Airbnbs in between. We got to get not so nice spots. But when we get a spot that we stay in, it's one of the spots that I secure through my, my closing ability. I have the ability to close deals. I could do real estate if I wanted to. I just don't like to. So, I, would, I would do Airbnb arbitrage, if anything. But so I wouldn't. You're normally looking for rooms where, I mean, again, how many people? Luxury. Are we luxury living in the jungle. How many people are we talking? Like that's that what would I on tell average. Them? I wouldn't tell them that. I would never talk about people because people fluctuate so much. Okay. And I take people to the airport and pick them up from the airport at this point. So with that being said, how many people normally be in a like a room? Like like what's Well we this is how we live. Yeah, we, but so let me know. We like, just laying around. We like, like to have tents. We had oh, the really yeah, nice Cabela tent. So if y'all don't know what that is, you can go online and look up a Cabela tent. They're like six hundred dollars a piece or more. And we got these tents, we have these Yeti Go Zero generators and solar panels. And so there's a lot of people who, we actually would rather sleep outside connected to the earth because it's what we're teaching, indigenous things. And then when we're in the house, you know, there are certain people who have certain quarters like pregnant women or certain women, or he would have a room or me because I would be the A-team or one of the leaders. I would always have my own space and I'd have my wives at different times. And so, you know, whenever I had my wife, I always get my own space because I'm special. You know what I mean? Like, because I, I do so much, right? Like, oh, you got to get your own space, you know, this, type of vibe. And I got my tent and I got the best tent and I got the best space. This, this, so I'm being treated very well. This, in this all place. sounds very luxurious. It does, and it is, it was. But if you know the type of money that was involved, it was actually a lot, a lot of money. People don't know how much money I, I generated with them as well, the plans we had. I had multi, multiple million dollar plans you know, with the group, but I wasn't able to execute majority of them because of Eligio's ego. It would be to the point to where we'd start projects, we'd start doing things, and then I'd get to the point to where it's like, all right, we're ready to go, and he would just shit on the whole thing because it would be like, but shouldn't we have faith? In the source and shooting. I'm like, yeah, they set all this up, but we got food stamps, we do this, we do that, we do this. All of a sudden I can't run credit. All right. So all of a sudden I can't I can't show, I can't run Forex. I can't do crypto. Like you he had me study this dude named Tay Sweat. I did it. I learned how to Forex trade. <laughs> Fuck. Like what you want me to do? Here I go. I'm, yeah, I did this for years. Studied this stuff for years. These are all skills I have to this day that I've taken out of y'all don't know half the shit that. I ain't putting nothing out there that I do because I just want to do. No facts. You feel me? But, and there's a lot of things I learned there that I was doing there, like running an app called Bego. 
social media app that we had. Yeah, and we, we, no we was making some money on Beagle here and there, but then I'm like, okay, well, how do we get the highest check? How do we get the top checks? How do we do that? I figured it out. Now I was making us $26,000 a month. Yeah, we need that. Me. No, this wasn't the group. This yeah. wasn't the A team. This wasn't the tribe. This was me. They're like, I'm like, hey, send me another $800. They're like, what? Yeah, send me $800. I don't know, bro. Like, I don't know. This is, I'm like, bro, just send me the shit. Like, I know what I'm doing. So I've invested, what, like $1,600 on the Bego, ended up getting $26,000. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I'm, I'm you know, I learned how to do it because, number one, we was already getting a lot of fame reputation. But what I found a, was a glitch. And what I really got to hook us up on there was I found a gift and I'd go to certain panels and it was like a super lucky gift. And I found out a pattern to always hit. And then I was doing, I started doing it and I, when I would put it on 999 lucky bag things, I'll click that thing and it would give you like all of that and it'll give you all of it back for you for free and then it'll stack more on top of it. Oh shit. And I used to just hit that, boom. All of a sudden it's a million, 1.1 million beans on a thing after me just spamming these gifts, doing them the right way. Checks, checks, checks. Do it during the PKs, waiting for the PKs. Checks, checks, checks. So yeah. I'm smart as fuck. And I basically oh, turn this shit up. Guess what this nigga did with it? Jet skis, food, airplanes. It's all gone within a month. Airbnbs, this, this, and that. So, so like, here's what Getting we're locked up, missing. Here's what we're about to do. Hold on. Uh, okay, hold on. So. The super was, lucky gifts, if you know about them. Yeah. Was he a fake pastor? Yes. Was he, Okay. Yes, because I found out after I started teaching him, then I started realizing something was wrong. But I didn't really, re actually, I take that back. I didn't realize something was wrong. I felt like I was being a great asset. I'm like, I'm teaching him something he doesn't know, but it's not because he's not who he is. I still believe he's the Messiah, he's the dude, he's this, he's that. But at the same time, I'm like, not really, because I'm like thinking that's also me. And then I'm also like, but that's all of us. Everybody's the Messiah. And I'm always going through that barrel every day. I wake up and every day I'm, a, I'm there, I'm like, yeah, he's the higher self, but it's because I choose to say that because it's really, I'm really the source and it's really like, this. if I'm using the knowledge we're teaching, then what we're doing is wrong. And so it is hypocritical. So fake pastor immediately, bad chess player. So let's do it like this, because I'm going to ask you some questions. Um, and I just want you to either to confirm if they're true, dispel if they're false, and just really all the rumors that go around carbonated. So let's go and go through there. Let's do it. I got to do it. Sheesh. Um, first and foremost, they say that carbonation was just basically using everyone's PPP money, uh, tuition Good question. funds. You talk uh, to the money guy right now. Yeah, just using the money that everyone was basically able to collect via their social security numbers, uh, whatever things they're able to collect from the government, and it was funneled into the carbonation in which uh, it was then used to do whatever the hell, uh, let's just say. Nature. I'm aware of all the rumors. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, let's start with that. Start I with wish, I wish we got them loans. I was aware of them and I seen them. They didn't come through. What we actually ended up going off of was something completely different. Um, yeah, what we ended up going off of was something completely different. We didn't necessarily have to use those loans. Uh, we were aware of them. We were looking into them. And actually, me and somebody else advised that we didn't really keep moving forward with them because there's a lot of things you'd have to set up. If we did, um, we did apply for a couple, but they were all done legit with the people who actually owned businesses before they came. So once those didn't work out, we kind of let that go. And then our next expedition was very costly and pricey as well. We ended up letting that go altogether, making money in different ways. Most of our money came from military checks. So we always had thousands. We always had money. Veterans? You know? I mean, I mean, people part of the military? And yeah. And people who different come in and out uh, would be part of the military sometimes. The one, one guy was just always there, and he was always donating his check and making that more. So we floated on that. You'd be surprised out of all the money we made, we, we pretty much could survive off of like $3,000 a month, quite literally, with all the other stuff that we had going on. So it was a lot of wasted time, a lot of wasted money, a lot of wasted energy, ultimately. Because we, we had a lot of money, we had a lot of opportunities, a lot of gifts, a lot of skills, a lot of talents in that building. And just like none of it was used. And um, I think about it, I was actually thinking about it today. I was like, it's crazy. It's like anytime anybody, anytime I would shine, I realized that like anytime I showed myself to be smart or I showed myself to be something good, I was always looked at as a problem. I remember when I first met him, 
I was saying, I was so positive and so happy. Everybody was crowding around me a little bit at one point. We were talking about stuff, just we new guys. And he came over and said I was being a vampire. Right. And I was like, huh? I ain't never heard that in my life. I'm being a vampire. I'm getting insecure. I'm like, maybe I am? Oh, shit. Let me stop. Like, how, what am I doing to do that? Like, oh, no. And then I realized that it's like anytime you pull attention off of him, you are automatically an enemy. And I, I didn't realize how ego-driven the whole group was. So prior to all of this stuff, you know, I'm thinking this is based on knowledge, truth, everybody being independent, everybody being themselves, you know, having that free will still. I'm not thinking we sacrificing all of that. So let me ask you this. Um, and based on the money and the way it was spent oh. and knowing, and I'm going to say Nature Boy because that's, I, you know. I just, Go ahead. I'll call him Alihio. Yeah. So with Nature, um, do you feel like overall he was moving more so not in spirituality, but more so just in, um, what would you call it? Uh, what's, you know what's, what? What's what? Uh, more of a superficial way. Yes. Uh, or more, uh, uh, what's the word? Carnal. Out yes. of a more carnal mind. The, what, what it is was that things changed. I, it I, was one way and then it I changed believe, another way. I believe at one point in time, he really wanted all that shit to happen. The good stuff, the positive things, you know, the spiritual things. I think at one point he really did want that. And I think a piece of him always wanted that and was connected to that. But ultimately, you're talking to somebody who's been doing people wrong their whole life. Like, this is a, this is a character that I'm not considering. This is a mentality. This is a knowledge. This is a frequency that we're talking about that's true for all of us. Whether or not we live a life in alignment with that is different. However, I'm not realizing that this dude has a character. I'm naive to this. You know, this is a young, what, a, what he would call a young nigga blunder, right? I didn't pay attention to the fact that the person who I'm dealing with is yep. not a good person. If I had did a background check, I would have never been there. And you're 22 at this time. How old is Nature Boy? 30s, 40 something. Almost 40, I think. 37. Yeah. So who was actually there to learn and who was just there to kind of frolic? Ooh, that's a good question. I would say the only people that was really there would be myself, Velvet. I had another guy on there, a Tron. He was Tron there. I say him because I can actually go there intellectually with him. So I can't take that away from him. Um, he goes by Who Canoe now, and sheesh, I think that's it. I think everybody else there went there for some other reason other than building what we believed we was going to build, what I went there for. And I could tell you what I went there for. I didn't go there to do no fight club stuff. I didn't no. go there to destroy. I didn't go there to just run and hide and just eat the man. Yeah, I think I, you explained that exactly. That was the big thing I wanted to do, yeah. but that's not why I went there. Yeah. The reason why I really went there and stayed there for so many years was because after me going there and realizing what we had and realizing the potential, this is after like me being there, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, yo, I really fucks with this. You make, everybody makes music right here. This right here, I see this every day. The whole setup like this, I'm used to this. This is my, this is regular with studios. Every day I'm waking up to a studio. Every day we're waking up doing healthy things. The group and the tribe was very healthy, very brotherly, very cordial, very cool. And I'm like, yo, this should happen on a grand scale. Like people should really like focus on their art and their craft and build in their purpose and let money come to them how it's supposed to be. And, you know, just everybody being themselves rather than thinking they have to do this or thinking they have to do that. I'd rather these people know about their options. And so I've always been big on that in sovereignty in all dimensions. I want people to be able to be themselves in every way when they think they're being themselves and they really not because they're living out a program that they was instilled with, whether they're aware of that or not. I want people to be aware of it at least and have a choice to do that bullshit to themselves. So I'd, another, I'd rather have them have that choice. So another thing that they said, and I want you to speak on it, is yeah. carbonation is a sex cult. Good one. All right, so this is a funny one to me. And actually, and I reel it back, I would say carbonation was a satanic cult. And there's a reason, a luciferic cult, if you will. And there's a reason why I would say that versus that because you'll see a lot of the sex connected to things like that. And I've actually had to look into it after the whole cult thing to really realize like, why, what are these different speculations? What are these different cults out there? What, how do these things work? And I started learning that this was like a, a coven, if you will. It was something more like that revolving around Alihio and really like 
it turned into that and didn't start that way, which is weird, you know? And I say it's satanic for these reasons. The goals and the beliefs are predicated upon nature destroying and killing pretty much everybody. This world, Babylon blowing up, destroying itself, war coming, all of that generations being screwed over, all of everybody, the jails being opened, everybody just being killed, all kind of different things. The belief system of carbonation is predicated pretty much upon that happening and us, the chosen ones, being in a nature environment, doing what we're supposed to do, but now we're the chosen ones and nature will protect us and kill everybody else and then we'll repopulate the earth. That was the belief system that he actually did have from the beginning to the end. But the, you see how you can play with that so many ways in between where you start building that world that's not there yet here now today. You start treating people certain ways. It's you know, non-human, like, and it's fucked up. But this is a Luciferic mindset where it's, fuck y'all, I'm God. I know you're different pieces of me as God, but I'm still God and I don't have to care about you. So it was very Luciferic in the behavior and how we all behaved. I personally learned I'm the opposite of that, which is what I call a Christic uh, view, viewpoint, which is not saying that everybody's gonna die, everybody's gonna get wiped away. I actually believe that at any point in time, any given point in time from any video, any message, anything from anyone, everybody can level up, everybody can advance, everybody can grow. We can collectively, consciously make better decisions. Like we're collectively, consciously making these decisions, those can get better, and I believe in that. And I believe in the constant ascension rather than the cataclysm of man. And I believe that can happen at any point. And I can't expect 99% of the world to do it if I'm gonna be the 1% that won't. So a Christic viewpoint forces me to be the example of what I wanna see in this world, quite literally. So that's my viewpoint. And that's how I live and that's how I was there. But the motive wasn't that. And I, I found myself arguing towards my last year there, like all the time, Ar always arguing with Eligio. You're like, you're not, that's not the knowledge, bro. Well spoken. And real quick, I just want to ask, how many years were you part of it? Four. Four years. So four and build, a half. Yeah. Four and a half. To build on it, technically, as you answered, what I, you know, sex cult. There are questions. The sex, the sex part was just like it's happening, but it's being abused. So let me ask you this: like then. it's happening on a normal level, like anybody right. else it's, having sex in their life, but it is being abused because of the incentives behind it. Especially the women getting the influence and the idea that if he chooses them, they're special, number one. And if they swallow his sperm and are able to get his sperm, well, then they're even more special. And if they can get pregnant, oh, well, then they're even more special. They're chosen. Okay, so and the women who, who are more closer to him obviously will get treated better. I, I heard that where he had, and again, speak on it, if, if what, what the details is, that if, if women will swallow his sperm or be able to take... No, his explanation of it would be everybody. Yeah, everybody. Be all right, so, all right, so children, wait, 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 before, you, before you say that, before we go there, to swallow his sperm or to be able to and take his sperm in the rectile, you know, area. Um, exactly. He does that, that with all the women too. Yeah, so that is where you find, what, enlightenment or whatever the fuck. He, I, I personally believe he was trying to do this to all the men. I think that his end goal was eventually to get this to be done with the men. I didn't see that at first. I didn't see that till the very end where I realized that he was really starting to massage the guys to the idea of being that close to him and, you know, gay things. And this started with transsexuals starting to come into yeah, the picture. He started bringing before even transsexuals, was it a heterosexual, homosexual agenda there at all? No, not at all. Okay. I had many, like, bro, they hated me, bro. Like, I've been with pretty much all the women at Carbonation, like a majority of them, like Efru. Uh, Malia wanted to be with me. Aya said she wanted to be with me. I was with Zoka. I was with Ra. I was with um, who? Who else? Like, bro. These like, are considered. Are they considered uh, wives? Terry, so what are they like, considered? Like, what's the, like? Are they wives of him? Like, no. Wives of you? What? Just so. Like, so some is of the women. This is what this is what fucked me up because I'm such a person of commitment. Like, I really want my wife. Like, I really want my woman. I want what's for me. I really do. So these women are coming in, the ones that are coming for me, I'm really thinking like this could be it. If it's not it, I let them go. I'm not gonna hold on to it. It's like a quick speed date. Sometimes I'm in the tropics and you're in the States. Are you trying to come out here and fuck with me after all this time we've been talking? And it's a lot of like, I, a lot of people are gravitated towards me. So I actually felt bad kind of about some of them who came like, I ain't gonna cap, like F Ruth, so good. Sorry, y'all shit, they came, my fault. <laughs> like, hey, whoops, you know, so shit, but I feel like, you know, dealing with them, those women, they, they 
also came for the wrong reasons. If they came to be with me, and this is true, if they came to be with me, or if they came just to under whatever pretense to be there and just maybe be with him, or just go out there and experience everybody, there's a number of women who would come there and pretty much just say they wanna be with this person and then go over to this person. So I'm gonna tell you from my perspective, the women there that were there, they were the ones doing this. The men, Eligio, we were not necessarily telling them what to do. The worst thing he did was play with their minds and to them always all the women have a channel to him and he can be with all the women at any given time and if they're single you're not allowed to be single so if the guy doesn't hold on to their girl and they happen to be single he's immediately in the dms he's immediately there or they have to go to where he is so a lot of the women would use the relationships as getaways as well it even gets to the point to where women i believe some of them would say they want to do that just to get away from him too you know there's other things where like like, for example, Malia, his, the, his current big wife right now, right? She would say that she wanted to be with me and she'd and be like, why? She's like, I don't know. It's just something special about him. It's just something about him. It could have been one or two things. That could have been true. She really could have felt like my authenticity. Or it could have been the fact that she was trying to get away. She was really trying to get away. And this is right after we picked her up from the Greyhound because she just ran away. And so the majority of the women who are there today ran away multiple, multiple times. They've all been beaten multiple, multiple times. Whether they'll ever say anything about it or not, or why they're still there, I don't know. I don't know where they're at right now. I, you know, and what do they call it? Stockholm Syndrome? It, I've, I didn't, bro, that's the realest, scariest condition I've ever seen you've on seen, a woman. You've seen on, Stockholm Syndrome in person. Bro, I, there's people still dealing with it that I know personally from this whole situation. I'm so glad and honored that I was raised well to be able to step out of this and be like, what the fuck? Like, and, and as it was going wrong to be the guy there saying, what the fuck? Then we, I've noticed me and I stayed way longer than I had to out of the hopes that things would get better. I ain't gonna cap. Like I really wanted Alihio to get better. I really did spend many years with him. I didn't want these things to go down the way they went down to where I'm correcting him on knowledge on the back end often, but usually me and him will be quiet about it. We'll be, I'll be like, don't put this out. Don't talk about this live. That's wrong. That's not how the hypothalamus works. <laughs> the the pituitary works. Like, you know, I'm over here teaching him things about the brain. I'm like, oh, he's like, oh, shit, we can't say that. I'm like, no, that's wrong. And we would usually be quiet about these things, and it's between me and him, but it started to trend. And I started to realize how fake um, and how much abuse his, what he did know or his experience over the naive minds was clear and evident. And now I'm starting to feel like a hero for the people, amongst the people, against the current leader like rebellion from inside yeah it felt like that yeah now uh the one thing i remember going viral um is him speaking about making love in front of children oh big mistake oh. um we all know what the consensus was on the outside yo all right i never watched that and when i got there I kept hearing about it, but I'm like, man, he wasn't on that. I get you, bro. You mean you was naked, he came and touched it, and you didn't hit him because you wanted him to feel bad. They don't understand you. I went back and I watched that video. And this is after years of knowing him. After years of knowing him, going back, watching that video, knowing how he really is. Bruh, he, it, what they call that is called a Freudian slip. It's like when the truth just came out. Right. It just slipped out. Yeah, exactly. Like, like I know what it's like in, in, in to be what the situation he's talking about. And when I heard the video, when I heard him say it, I will. I definitely wish I heard that before, because he saved it in the video. What he was doing. If I watched that video, I would have immediately pointed it out. I'm like, oh, he just tried to save himself. Mm -hmm. He just tried to. He knew he slipped, mm -hmm. and he just everything he said of that was like trying to ignore it, but trying to save it at the same time. And I, I'm, I'm into psychology deeply. I love psychology, you know? And so I'm, I'm watching, I'm like, bro. He had a, uh, he had a choice. Hold on, him. I might have to reevaluate this because after years of him seeing all the things he's done sexually and learning his past, his true past, he's over 10 years in the sex industry, bro. Do you know what the sex industry is? And you said you spent over a decade in the sex industry right before doing this? Do you know what kind of beliefs, thoughts, ideas, practices, You've already done to get to this point of now being a spiritual guru? Without question. Bro, you've touched men, women, men and women. You've touched this, you've touched that. You've done, he's done everything. This is 10 years. You're two, three, four years in any given 
thing you you're done you've done so much within it 10 years in the sex industry starting off dancing for men so it already starts off a little i'm not knowing this and as I'm learning it on the for, on the on the on the front and on the on the, on the, on the, um, the war front when I'm there the home front right when I'm learning it there I'm just like it's not what we think it's not what we think man oh no nah, oh that makes sense yeah, you went through really it that. too oh you were struggling the yeah you were struggling man now I see where you at though dude don't regret nothing look where you at today got, yeah what you did got you here to yeah this fuck that so that's how the vibe is there the whole time but now I'm looking back I'm like bro. I had no self value, self worth. I had no, what's the word? Self esteem. No self esteem. I was really like knowing and knowing, reading, like reading astrology, reading all the powerful things about myself, but then like looking at my reality and not seeing that, but seeing how it could be that. And then just like, nah, that's not me. And then um, just living like that there for years. That was probably my biggest you know, thing I dealt with was, you know, identity. Yeah. Really trying to figure out like, am, who am I? Am I this leader? Am I this? Am I that? What am I doing anymore? Like at this point, so, don't even know myself. Like, And that's what I want to kind of, you know, hinge on is when I go through and watch, you know, a video and I pull up combination and uh, let's say I see a video where you're in it. Mm -hmm. um, just, and again, just give me the mindset and the psychology behind it. Mm -hmm. Um, I, have, I see a man in Nature Boy, and I see uh, a following of women and men. Mm -hmm. um, a community. A community. Uh, it's a big community, too. Yeah, a big community. And so, my, my, mind you, sometimes everyone's not there. I just see, like, the video might not be every, every They might be elsewhere, but right. I see a video of a lot of people in a room. Um, if it's women, I see him technically... And this again, this is what I pulled up. So I'm not, I'm not fully, I'm not five years invested or anything like that. I just pull up certain, you know, clip notes, I guess you could say. Right. Um, I see where he's basically degrading women, basically being what you could consider like a pimp to women. A and gorilla I, pimp. A gorilla pimp. And words. then also I see him doing the same thing to men, to where degrading men, have Correct. him doing things that technically Correct. a man, let's say in the States, would not do to another man or not do Correct. around another man or not be submitted or subjected do to certain for things. another person. And, and, there, another and, there, person. and to me, and again, there's a, there's a recording of it. So there's a cell phone or something mm -hmm. on to show this is what I'm doing to them. Give me the psychology behind why even yourself would be saying, Yo. I will be here and I'm going to submit myself to this. I'm glad you're saying this. Now, this is, this is one of the, I have to say this, one of the biggest things that made me Stay in carbonation, really love carbonation. Was I have a lot of Aquarius energy in my in my um, being, and because of that community, it's huge. I really don't care how much people know at any given time. I really don't. My biggest thing is making sure everybody's being respected as the same thing. That's the only thing that I'm God, you're God, he's God. He, that's all I really care to use that for is to make sure that we minus that ego, we we we're equal, and there should be a. a a certain level of respect there, but I also learned through time that people don't respect themselves to where you can't expect that from everybody else. You, if you're gonna be that, you gotta be that for yourself, right? So that's big to me. As, I'm, as we're there, I'm not only Aquarian in nature, but I'm also very Piscean in nature. So what this means is that I'm all about science and facts, but with the Piscean part is I'm all about the subconscious mind and influence and media and things like that, especially with music. So behind the scenes, the men are in cahoots. The men know, okay, we about to disrespect this person. It, well, this is towards the end in the house in Atlanta. I don't know if you guys seen the houses, uh, the videos where they're touching his feet, they're doing this, we're acting crazy. We don't always act like that. When we're off camera, some of the times it would be like, are right, we about to do this, we about to do that, we about to do this, we're gonna do that. And the reason why we're doing that is for this. We want them to see this. We want this, the, the masses to think that. We're gonna have this white dude get on his knees and bow and say, "I need this." The black I see man, that. that black so man. things you are know, different off camera than on camera. Completely. Wow. After, I, when that's over, we calling him John B. We we being cool with oh, him. No, we being cool. We, he, you need anything? Know. We love you, Jungle Boy. Make a man. And we being because we are cool. Yeah, we are cool. He probably should stay away yeah, from us. On camera's us. like what? The yeah. Fuck? But on camera, that was the point. Is to is to do things for drama, attention, this and that. 
people end up paying for that shit in different ways. It actually ended up starting to turn into for money. And it started to turn into for money. Like, but I'm not knowing. He literally is dog training these people in the rules of media. In the rules of media, he's dog, and I'm sitting there doing some of these things with him. Like, I'm like, okay. And I'm talking to him on the back end. And he's, he's asking me questions. I'm teaching about King Solomon. I'm te- answering questions about all this stuff. He's bringing up these numbers. I'm starting to show him what these numbers really mean. And he's bringing up these threes and all this stuff. And he's going through all this stuff and he's going into it. I'm bringing him on the, around. I'm like, hey, if you really want to teach people this source code, this is how it works. I'm teaching him the real shit. He doesn't know. He calls himself Three God. That was his most recent title. He doesn't understand the knowledge of one, two, three, three, six, nine, energy, frequency, vibration. He doesn't understand you know, that at all, that source code, one, two, four, five, seven, eight, binary codes. He can't, he doesn't understand it or break it down to the extent that I was starting to teach him and show him right. to where he started branding himself as three God, calling me a demon. He started calling me a demon, branding himself as three God and began to have everybody say three all the time. And if he gets people to say three or make a three symbol, three million, uh, uh, one million t- or three million times, then you're gonna get in one million dollars. And he started teaching people this online. When one, two, four, five, seven, eight, three, six, nine, vortex mathematics is what's designed to build pyramids, is what runs everything. And he's teaching people, if you say three, three million times you get one million dollars. I'm disgusted. I'm fighting him every night at this point, every night. And so the pretense behind it was just faker and faker and faker and faker. So when I showed up there and I realized it wasn't what I thought it was online, I thought these was them niggas, that was fake, that was the first thing. After that, you know, it was just, really was benefit of the doubt. It was me growing. It was me trying to figure out who I was. It was me looking for a father figure. It was me looking for all those different things. All those things happened, correct. But I could have got those in any type of experience, to be real with you. I did not have to go there to get that experience. What I did get experience of though, was just that. And what I did learn, you know, I, I haven't even talked about it in this interview, but Rose assassinated my daughter. Like, he killed my daughter, my, my unborn child. He killed her with alcohol multiple times behind my back. Behind my back. Raped my wife behind my back. Gave her alcohol, killed her behind. I find out all of this stuff. We still forgive this nigga, bro. We still rock with this nigga. Me and the wife, me and the, the girl, her name was Oka. Me and Jay, we kept coming up with plans and plans and plans to not get him put in jail. We kept coming up with lies and lies and lies to tell the world so that everybody could just get on with themselves and not let this turn into something massive because if the truth got out, it would. So we lied to the world and said, the umbilical cord choked my child during labor. Wow. But the truth is, when she gave birth to the child who was dead, they looked at the, the, the um, placenta and like, oh, the placenta was poisoned for some time. Wow. The placenta has been poisoned. Yeah, the child, she made it all the way to this point. She just barely died. She had just barely, barely died right wow. during labor. And they said that she just didn't have enough strength. You know, there was none, enough, wasn't enough oxygen in there and there's too many things going on with the placenta where it was dying. It was, you know, already. Without question. And so, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. He actually called. I told him what happened. He started to blame me for it. I, cu- I, 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 said, I said, like, I said, like, you fucking with something. I said something to him. Like, I would have never said to him. And I hung up on him. And I said, sorry, there's no service. It's over. There's no service. And me and her just stayed there for like a day, two days. So, so I have to ask you, um, with his arrest, uh, do you feel like, damn what the charges are, that this is karma, this is uh, atonement of sins throughout of what was going on with carbonation that he is now sitting behind bars awaiting judgment uh, outside of the charges? I think, you know, karma's an interesting thing, dharma's an interesting thing, but they only plague you and they only haunt you because they sit in your heart. There's nothing in the universe that's keeping tally of you. So it's there and it's sitting there in his heart. And the reason why he's in jail is because it won't get out and he won't let it out. So it doesn't matter what he did. Eventually he was going to end up there. He actually started manifesting jail heavily towards the end. He just kept preparing to go to jail for like the past, like, 
seven months. It's almost like he manifested it. Is that like, why y'all were like moving? Like <clears throat> no. Moving around towards the end? Like, That's not why. It could have been there in his head, like getting caught up for just certain things. Like, cause he should be in jail 5,000 times over, bro. If you want to be real. And with what the girl got him on rape right now, which is, I looked at, I looked deep into the shit. It's rape in, in a number of ways. From fraud rape to, to a number of things. To actual like imprisonment, like to inebriation, to beating you, and then you getting you to say yes, like crazy shit. Like bro was literally a rapist yeah. on by de- by multiple definitions of rape. I had to look into this afterwards, like to see if this girl was lying or not. I wanted to really know, like, is it though? I looked into it. It's more than that. It's worse than that. And if I look at that, he's been doing that for years. And she, the girl who got him locked up, got the small end of it, and she's pregnant with my child too. Or not too. Yeah, yeah. She's pregnant with my child right now. And because me and her, we thought we had something genuine over the years as well. But it wasn't that at all. The truth is, like, she was she came in on some obsession type of thing with me. She been had a relationship with this dude multiple times before she ever knew me. She had a relationship with this with Alihio. She had a relationship with Velvet, uh, who was Alihio's wife. You know, me and her, on the other hand, I had a wife named Zoka. She came in while I had a relationship already trying to be with me the whole time for years and years and years and she's going around like bro I'm not gonna go too deep into that because she has a lot of faults like a lot of us do she has a lot of ups uh but she's now like my baby mother quite literally and I just wanted to be known that you know when it comes to Alihio and when it comes to me and when it comes to these women and these children it's like there is a lot of honesty and truth coming from like majority of all of us unfortunately we met on a false foundation and so like even though we built some things and we have things now it's like we've been put into a point to where we were back to zero we hit ground zero this dude's nowhere to be found he's in jail he's probably never going to get out if and you know what i mean i have videos of this dude i have personal videos in my clouds of this dude literally like stroking himself masturbating to other men while the women are sitting there watching him like there's a reason, exactly, bro. This is at the end. This is when we was out. This was like two, three days before I dipped. You feel me? Like, and when I left, the other men left with me. There's a bunch of other men that are like, oh, no, no. Like, we going to. Like, it's a, it's, it's a wrap. Yeah, we going to. And then shortly after that, it was just over, over, over. Usually, I get him out of jail. <clears throat> I actually was going to get him out of jail again, even though he got locked up for that. I had a method, had the paperwork, had the lawyer, had the money. I he was on a call from jail one day. I said, hey, I'm about to get you out. Oh, you think I did it, huh? Hey guys, Solar thinks I did it. Oh, okay. I'm like, what are you doing, bro? I'm about to get you out of jail. It's like, I'm like trying to make a joke. I'm trying to, like, no, like, yeah, I got He's like, oh no, you really think I did it? Oh, you ain't got no faith. And then everybody's like, wow, oh yeah, oh that's that, yeah. And I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with y'all niggas? They, they do something, I say something, whatever, and they're like, all right, yeah, go stand in the corner. And I'm like, go stand in the corner. What the fuck? I, 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 I get up. I'm like, I'm like, got my phone. I'm like, about to get him out of jail. I'm letting him know. I'm like, bro, I got a paper. Like, okay. I'm going back to the, I'm going to this corner and I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> I start, I turn around. I'm like, hey, hey, excuse me, y'all. Hey, y'all. Um, what? They're like, Solar wants to talk. I'm like, hey, yeah. Um, so you can say, like, I got demons. Shit, you could say I'm the devil. I think it's time for me to go. <laughs> I think I don't need to argue with y'all. I don't need to fight with y'all. I think that Juju can do everything I've been doing here. I think these are all grown ass men. I think you're all grown ass people. I actually think I'm holding you guys back more than I'm helping you. Let me go be somewhere where I'm actually a value because I'm not here anymore. Let me go somewhere where I'm valued and where I should be. And I, I left that day because I had to realize like I'm living my life for him. And I've been known that, but I've been choosing to do that. But I think me choosing to do that is my choice. I'm like, hold on, bro. What I would choose to do with my day and my time is not this at all. And I started realizing that as I'm arguing with this dude every day, I was like, come on, bro. Like, I can't get sleep because this nigga can't stick to the knowledge that we started with. Do you feel like he would have made it as far as he did if you wouldn't have empowered him with the knowledge? Hell no. Hell no. Carbonation would have been done with Rambo and Key left. Rambo when he left back in Mexico, when I first got there, bro, I became the go-out team. I go, I'm light-skinned and this. They, they picked the right one. <laughs> they picked the right one. I'm over here learning a whole new language. 
the whole neighborhood. You could right now I'm probably better off in Mexico than here. I go to Mexico right now, they'll be like, Sol, Sol, hey, Sol. Oh, I already got it. They'll get my food ready and everything. They'll have everything ready for me just off of looking at me. Just because I got so integrated into the community. I help them. I'll help them. You see what I'm saying? I'll pay them. We'll do it's, it's all kind of things. Like I could pull up anywhere in, in Palenque right now and be good. I could go anywhere in Playa del Carmen, Mexico, Cancun, you know, these areas. I'm straight to this day because, you know, I mean, I spent so many years out there, but it was me on the ground. It was me doing everything. I got all the fruit guys numbers. I got all the vendors numbers. I got all the people who do everything. Like I can literally put together a whole, my whole own businesses out in Mexico based on the people who I know they're from living my life and sustaining 20 plus people consistently in multi-million properties. You feel me? Like and I'm taking those skills now and just applying them to myself. Amen. And those people who want to learn that, I had started a group called Soul Redemption. People paid a decent amount of money to join my group. Soul Redemption, sovereignty in all dimensions. You know, like you get out of a certain situation, you want to make something that's like anti that, right? That's what everybody does. Like, so that's, and I did that. And I was like, sovereignty in all dimensions. I don't want people to be limited when it comes to that money and how UCC codes work. I don't want people to be limited to how credit works and how those things work. Cause I just live in a group who's people who's limited on that. And, I, and they're over 20 and it's sad. You know, I don't want people to be limited by their emotions. I don't want people to be limited by their, their level of knowledge. I don't want people to be limited by society, these ideas. I don't want people to be limited spiritually by what they're eating and if they're breathing properly or not. I, don't, I want people to have the option. So I created something called Soul Redemption Sovereignty in All Dimensions, where I teach everything. Amen. And I have connections to all of that, a complete curriculum and everything that's designed in a one, two, three format that you could teach to your children. Your children. Like, and I actually use it on children. And like now, when I'm raising the girls I'm with now, best thing I could have ever done, because why? Now I understand them. I understand what they're going through to where when they're doing certain things, it's not punish them, punish them for this or that. It's like, oh, this is gonna turn into that if we let this happen. We have to approach it like this. Understanding the child, working with the child rather than working the child. You see what I'm saying? And yourself is where that starts. So you gotta understand, how are you gonna possibly raise a child right? You gotta understand, your parents probably didn't raise you right, accustomed to who you are. They probably raised you based on who they thought you need to be or who they were, and that ain't nothing else they could have did. Me, we're at a point in time now with knowledge and information to where we can know enough about ourselves, but fuck that. We can know about our kids. We can know about our generations. We can work with our home, our families deeper now, today, starting with ourselves. Changing the world's gonna be hard. I just spent four and a half years trying to do that. I'm not about to spend any more time doing that. Changing yourself is in your power right now, completely. And that's just where I'm at with that. You know. When you left, um... I know you spoke on going there searching for something. Mm -hmm. When you left, did that depression come back or did the lack from the lack of brotherhood or things of that nature or were you better as a person? Were you more whole when you left? The depression left when I found myself smiling for the first time on photo. And that was when I was surrounded with the tribe. And that was one of the first times I ever really smiled on photo. Like smiled. Like oh, man. like never did that. I had brothers, I had sisters, you know, I had a family and I, and that right there, <clears throat> we had, we made a video every day. I had never made videos. I never talked. Nobody ever wants to hear me. Everybody shut up. I know so much shit that no one ever wants to go there. So I find a group who wants to do that. I'm OD into it. Not only that, but deeper than that, I'm like, I feel like when I boil it down, I wouldn't change a single thing that did happen, of course, because I am a spiritual person. I feel like if I wasn't choosing that and I wasn't doing that, I would have left earlier. I wouldn't care about most of these people. But going through that, all of the bullshit in between and then getting out of that showed me that I am who I believe I am. I am this good natured person. I am this good hearted person. Look at all the shit you went through and you still forgiving Alihio. You still answered the phone for him. You still making sure that his seed, his daughter is getting the best life she could possibly ever get when he killed mine. She right there. Look at her, she's doing great. I've been with her since before she was out of the womb. I've been with her since she was one. She's my goddaughter. 
His daughter's my goddaughter. And I've been raising her way more than he ever has because I'm actually here for what's real. So the generations are everything to me. I'm not going around just trying to get people pregnant or having sex with anybody. I've actually had sex only with the women who was my wife. They would leave me and go fuck him and then ask to come back and be with me and I would forgive them. So do you feel like another community could be created if done properly, do you feel like that is something you would want to create or have your hands <clears throat> ever again? 100%. And I think it's already there. I believe that the community, this is the conscious community. You want to know the conscious community? The people online already doing it. Go yeah. look them up. They're, they're online they're already, already online. doing it. They already got the songs. They already making the food. They already got their page. They already launched their business. It's like, go support that. Go be you. Go do what you're supposed to do and work with who you supposed to work with. I can't work with the whole spiritual community, but I can work with all the artists. I can work with the herbalists. I can work with the I can work with everybody in the spiritual community. But that's just because I'm a mind when I work. I don't really work physically. I connect things and connect pieces. You know, I manifest things. I work off the phone in general with everything. So, <clears throat> and I have my crafts. I have my arts. I have what I do. So that's going to dictate who I'm around all the time. You know what I'm saying? I think it's going to happen at a high, high scale especially with the content of my music. Like I put, I put a healthy message. You can listen to my song 20 years from now and it's still healthy. You can let all of your kids listen to my music and it's healthy for them. You can't feel bad. You feel me? So like, I'm really proud of that you know, to have cultivated that. When it comes to community, it's already there. It's already being built. I think that people need to be more focused on developing themselves. And if they can do that, they're gonna find whatever community they're supposed to be a part of because they're gonna receive that support from who they're supposed to receive it from. You ain't gotta convince nobody, I believe, to support you doing what you're supposed to do. That's for you. You're doing it for that reason, it's gotta come. If you're rich in your heart, you're rich from the start, you're good. You're doing it for money, you're doing it for those reasons, you're always gonna have a problem, so. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Or you could get it and then lose it. Ultimately, if the heart's not there, the morality's not there, I'm not there because I know that those things what they, I, I'm not attaching myself to things that come with parasites anymore or that come with, you know, things I don't agree with. It's just there a standard. Go. It's just a boundary now that I have to live with, you know, and everybody needs to live with this. It's, I'm not going to go too much into just women or just men, um, but do know that I say love wins. I always say it's checkmate because love wins. And all that means is that I've chosen to accept the person to be whoever they are, not try to make them into anything else, but who they are, learn from them, and move forward with my life. Anything negative or anything that I don't really need from them, if I can turn it into a lesson, great, you know, moving forward, but there's nowhere where I feel like I owe anybody or anything, any, any, or anything, any, anything anymore. Like, I used to feel like that. That's I used right. to do things for favors. I used to want things done for me out of a promise of giving them a favor, and it's like, if you just move from your, from your own will, drive, passion, like every day, like you can't go wrong. You can't go wrong. That's the, everything I have to keep to this, from this day, all the big money that I've made, everything has came from free things. I made over half a million dollars since I left Carbonation and all of that has came from things I did eight years prior from the goodness of my heart. Extinguished, Man. like you spending my last thousand dollars type of thing, you know, turned into five, that times how much, you know what I'm saying? So that's, that's right. my life, and that's just how I've lived, and I'll continue to teach that because I've seen it. But I don't know how you going to do it. Like, who are you? What you got to offer? Like, even if I read your astrology, that's just going to tell you the energy that you have. You still have to tell me who you are. You still have to tell me how you're going to use it, why you're going to use it, and for what reasons. Like, I don't know. I don't know that, and you don't even have to tell me that. But if you come to me for that type of guidance, all I can do is tell you what the energy is. You, I could never tell you who you are, what you're supposed to be. You know what I mean? That's what everybody is here to figure out for themselves. And then to achieve that and embody that is another thing. You're going to find yourself accepting who you already are. You're going to find yourself stop trying to be all these different things you don't need to be. But when you go hard on being you, you still find discipline. You still find um, doing things you don't want to do, but you, at least you're doing it to get better at what you do love to do. So I, me personally, I'll push myself to work out. I don't feel good to work out, but when I do work out, I, I thank myself like a million times when I'm done. 
You know, I don't always yeah. like to do this or, or engineer the songs to the details. I don't even like to sit down and do it. But when I do it and I'm done, I'll be like, I can't stop playing the track. You see exactly. what I'm saying? It's like, exactly. so it, it's, I just want people to invest in themselves. If they're going to invest so wholeheartedly balls deep the way I did it, just start doing it in your, like invest in yourself. Like, I know that's so cliche. It's so cliche, but that's why I teach sovereignty in all dimensions. So people can dispel what's not them. That's the biggest problem is when we don't know, you know, when we're not being ourselves. I've seen that. So I'm going to do it like this. So, um, again, man, so well spoken, so well spoken. Uh, I want you to tell me as far as, um, you know, you mentioned Velvet. Yeah. Uh, she is here with you. Yes. Um, if you don't mind, just I want you to speak on her. But if you don't mind, can I bring her into frame and have her sit down next to you and have you speak on on the essence of what Velvet is. I thought she never asked. Okay, I, I mean, seriously. Um, but can I get you and definitely bring bring everyone, bring everyone. Yeah, yeah, bring, bring, bring the girl. Bring everyone, because- um, It's all good. Yeah, yeah I, I want you to be able to um, have a conversation in which, um, you know, the story that you just told, of course, always comes full circle and there's always more story to tell. And uh, we, sp we say these names and you know, on y'all own platforms, they see who y'all are. But of course, on this couch, of course, I want to be able to say a name and have people be able to see who Actually, you who we're speaking of and kind of go through there. Um, if you don't mind, we are welcoming right we are welcoming uh, Velvet to the couch as she is right here by your side, right here to support um, uh, with her beautiful daughters. Uh, you can see right here. As we are here to um, just. I just quickly want you to even touch on, Ooh. you know, your history personally with Velvet as far as Correct. even coming in and how you met her and then how you exited with her in town. So that's crazy. Um, I have to go in the intro because I never exited with her. How we ended up meeting was actually very interesting. Um, so I went to the group. You guys understand the pretense of me before the group and now I'm going to the group and what I kind of went through in the group. She's the cult leader's wife the whole time. Like if there's any woman that's ever been with Eligio that is off limits, it's her. And wow. we're never knowing why. Like we're knowing why, we just know he really likes her. Um, she's on the way, you know, he, she's, she's pregnant by him by the time I meet her. She's already like, what, like six months, seven months in already. And I'm like, it's like six months in already. And you know, this little one isn't even here yet, Ellie. And um, yeah, she's a cult leader's wife. I have to study her day in, day out. Like I'm an astrologist, so like I do astrology, but I've never had to study somebody's chart more than hers. I didn't even study Eligio's chart as much. Eligio would have me, yeah. The way you wanted to study her or he would have you study? Eligio would have okay. me study her chart so that he would know, you know, is she gonna, if she left, is she gonna come back? Or is she gonna do this? Where is she at in this process? If she can do that. Oh, what are her, what are her angels? What are her demons? Oh, look at her, she's in her demons. Oh, it's her. See, I'm, I'm, I'm a good guy, I'm Eligio, I'm a good guy, it's her. She's tripping, she's tripping. Y'all, you see that, she's tripping. And the whole group, everybody thinks she's fucking nuts. From when I meet her, we're thinking she's crazy. I'm thinking she's nuts. I'm thinking she is his crazy wife. She's a mute. She does. She's like she just breaks stuff. She's just volatile for no reason. She's with the greatest guy ever. Like, what are you? What are you doing? Like, why are you acting like a child? Like, grow up. And everybody kind of like look at her like that because he puts that narrative out. We're never knowing her side of the story. Now I heard her side of the story after this, and I'm understanding her energy. And I've finally been able to spend my own time with her. I was able to realize what was really happening. And you know what? Very, very similar to Jack and Goomba. Very, very similar. If you gave Eligio a gun. Kind of got the same situation. And you add a bunch of other women into the mix. And then you make Goomba good looking and charismatic. And then give him a couple of goons to do stuff for him. Like, yeah, women gonna be a little interested in, in like, okay, okay, who's this dude? He seemed like a boss, he seemed like a king, okay. So let me ask you that. And so we looking for a mature woman, we waiting for a queen to come in for him. We waiting for the, the baddest bitch to come in for him, and we thinking she's just this immature little girl, is she in a way? 
So as you're reading her, what are you personally feeling as what you're seeing? I get there. I wouldn't even have even really cared about, you know, she spurred so much in me. I wouldn't even really have cared to even go to Carpenter and Shit at all when presented. If it wasn't for me knowing that, like, I had, she had did it, this is what it is. It wasn't her specifically. I didn't even put this together then. But she did a video with a poem. And she was doing a poem of speaking of, like, just of love and, like, how she, it was just beautiful how she did the whole thing, right? I saw that poem. I'm like, Carbonation is dope. It's lit. And then they did a song called Back Jumping, and she's sitting there next to him, and they're at the top, and it's like a throne. It's like a king and a queen. I'm like, oh, this shit organized now. Oh, this is jumping. Yeah, okay. I got up. I was dancing. I was happy. And I was really excited for the whole thing, because I'm like, there's some structure. There's some order. It's like a real God's army over there. Niggas in the knowledge, everybody living in the truth. I'm not knowing these people don't know what, what, they, what they teacher is teaching. I didn't know. I thought they masters. I'm thinking everybody masters at this stuff for some reason. I'm not thinking they're students. I'm not. I'm thinking these, I'm going with the elites, the best of the best. They all know. They all know. And it's not that. So, yeah, I get there. Start thinking she's crazy. I'm seeing her beat her a couple times. One of my first times really even interacting with her, having a moment to share with her, was her passing her my favorite towel that I've always been carrying with me for years. That's a maroon blood red towel. Uh, and like giving it to her to wipe the blood off of her face from him smacking the shit out of her. Like, wow. and, she, and I, let, me, let me say this. It's like, I, I'm gonna say certain things, but I don't know if she allowed, she gonna speak on certain things. I'm gonna say certain things. That's what I experienced. Perspective. I had to get, that's when I gave my towel to her the first time. This is, this is out of the country. You know what I'm saying? We in the middle of the road. There's no police around. It's like, what you gonna do? Yeah. And that was kind of like the message to her that from him was like, which you, you, I could kill you. Right. Like I could kill you. And she's, I'm not knowing she's living with this a lot. This is me barely getting to know. I'm thinking that this is just some toxic shit. She, I'll be tripping. He's this great guy in our view already. And there's other women who he could be dealing with. So why, why would he be invoking this in you? Like you're tripping. And so I'm like feeling bad for her. After getting, getting known for a while, I remember there was one time we had to give our opinions about about them where we're giving like praises or something and i remember i went up to i was on my knee and i'm like Lee, you're like father nature i give him a, a good cliche thing but i'm like with you velvet you're my mom you're my sister like put together and my dad like put together she has the same scar as my dad she she wow. looks like she has the same um sign as my mother acts just like my mother and just like my sister and she actually kind of like to me she looks like all of them put together you know what I mean? And it's just nuts. And I told her, I said that, and this is very early. He, they're, they're a thing at this time. I'm not. I'm just, a, I'm just a humble, you know, servant. And I'm telling her, you look like mother nature. You look like, you know, just so godly, like uh, the moon, like the spirit, the essence of a mother, like the spirit of a mother. Like, and I was telling her that she's like my sister, my mom, all that. And it's just like, you're just, I don't know. From that moment, I remember I was saying that to her. I had a very deep reverence and respect for her that was, you could almost say was delusional from where I was at, but that's what I had for her. And she was always just this special object to me for all these years. And um, it was never like I was ever infatuated with her. It's like, when you say, I love Jesus Christ, you're not like, I'm trying to fuck you. It's like, no, it's like, like, Jesus, hallelujah. And that's what it was like. It's like, oh, it's like a love. It's like a reverence, a respect. It's like, oh, you're special. I, okay, cool. Like, don't mess with that. Don't touch that. I'm not like, oh, I got to hit that. I got to get some of that. It was never that at all. Like, right. it was never even like, I want to be your friend. It was, baby girl, it was always just like um, respect. Well, they say most men are attracted to those people who, women who are like their mother. I'm and, attracted to. And women are you. attracted to men who are like Uniform. their father. And. Yeah. Like, I mean, for you to say that, I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. That's deep. That's deep. But, but I've seen that in other relationships too. Like with Zoka, I've seen a little bit of my sister and my dad, you know, and my cousin Danielle and her. I've seen, you know, a little bit of this and that person. That her though, it's weird, bro. Like her connection with like my, my family, her family, bro. Like, I'm gonna let her speak for herself. Yeah. But what I'm learning about her father. And me and her father having so much in common, it's like, it's really weird. I see why Eligio kept it so separate for so long. I get it now. He felt the chemistry way before we felt the chemistry. And I remember one time she asked me to make like patty dough, dough like dough for like little Jamaican patties. And I was like, she showed me how to do it. I'm on my knees sitting there watching. I'm next to her. He's like, 
I can't believe you. Like, you want to be with my wife? You too close. But you uh, like him? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like, I'm like, I see your eyes. I'm like, nigga, yeah. I'm like, it's dope. <laughs> and like, but I mean, I'm, I've been ex- ex- punished for days, weeks. For one time, I gave her a hug and I like picked it up a little bit because my friend did it. Tron did it. He hugged her and he picked her up and they've been, they've been friends for a long time. And it was cool. So then she came to my turn. It was my turn to hug her because she came back. I hugged her. I gave her a little pick up too. What's the punishment for, for days, weeks? What does that look like? I had what? I had been, I'm always at the top rank, right? I had to be demoted to the very, very bottom for oh, weeks. Wow. So that means I had to do all the extra cleaning and stuff. Shit, I did anyway. <laughs> uh, I did all the but, extra cleaning, things like that. And then on top of that, um, I didn't get to be with my wife. I didn't get to spend time with my wife at the time. And, and so, so that's being taken from me. And then also, um, so the wife, you what was it? The rank. Yeah, it was the rank. And then, oh, I had to stand in the corner for like, Seven hours. I'm sorry. Wait a minute. God, see, when you say stuff like that. That day, that day, no. that day, I stood there seven hours. So, so, so wait, 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 wait. I was so disciplined on myself. They offered me food, and I'm like, no. Yeah, I'm about saying, I'm, 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 I got this. I mean, when you say things like that, I'm like, nigga, I'm like, fuck this corner. And fuck everything. Yeah. What makes you I say, did. I'll stand in this corner for seven hours? You just mentioned discipline, which I respect that. I didn't know Eligio was a liar until after I left the group. Yeah, I mean, even like, it was like two or three months after I left the group that I barely find out that he was actually a liar. Mm. I know that sounds crazy to say, but I know he, was, he has, he's, he's a black man, you know, being spiritual. He likes this, he likes Hennessy, he likes this, he likes that, he likes those things. And so I don't want to take that from him. You feel me? So I'd give that to him and be like, that's you, that is you being you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, um, so I, I have to ask then, what do you feel, and I mean, not what do you feel, but also, if you know, what is his thoughts on y'all's situation right now? I think, you really want to know what I think? Yeah. I'm just, just, I think he knows what time it is. I think he's very grateful. I think he knows that there is no better outcome for Ellie. Okay. I'm her so godfather. he's thinking not of her. I've been carrying her around since she was out the womb, walking, she talking about what's that, what's that. I'm teaching her everything. Like, I've made sure, I'd be going out in the streets looking for medicine for her and outside of the country so she could breathe at night. I'm doing all kind of crazy things to make sure this little girl is having the best possible life. And it's not even like, I'm looking at it like I'm gonna get with Velvet and we go to go. I'm like, no, it's just respect. That's the chief's wife. Her daughter needs help. Come on, like this is, this is what we stand for. Why wouldn't I give everything for that? And I did, I did. And I stayed around in many situations where I shouldn't to be there for everybody else. So I will take, I'm the guy who will take the lashings for the group, for, the, for everybody else. Are they trying to make an example out of me and still like push through that and still do more and above and beyond? That's my energy. So it's like that being used against me, it looks really bad. I'm not gonna lie to you, brother. The way y'all sitting there in the aura and the, the way y'all are set up right now, I know he's not happy. There's oh, no, no, no. he cannot. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> I think and for when her, he sees this, no, 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 for no, her, no, for her hey, and listen, yeah. I got, I'm glad you said like that. For Everything her, else, for her, is. she's happy. But to see you next to Velvet, Ooh. rubbing that, rubbing that shoulder, Ooh. looking in her eyes and sweet nothings. What what man wants they to see another? Know. What man wants to see know. a better man taking care of his child? Sheesh, no man. <laughs> How are you over there taking care of the child that I didn't want to take care of? You know what? <laughs> You know, you said what? Go ahead. Men should be responsible then. Yeah. If, that's the, if that's the case, yeah. then they should be responsible. Yeah, and if they're not going to be responsible, then they should go in the corner. <laughs> they should go put themselves in the corner. That part. His turn in the corner. Goddamn. Um, with that being said, as of right now, um, as of your exit from Carbonation, Velvet's exit from Carbonation, Bobby. and we're going to speak to Velvet, but I just want to know, as far as how are y'all doing right now because we watch out online we seen after the whole jaguar situation uh she was she herself was investing in y'all's uh, relationship she was, she was investing in the kids and the babies and then we seen y'all kind of had a little situation that might have took things left but yeah y'all are here right now united um as united right. front um how are y'all doing right now um just again as a unit so like i was saying about the jaguar thing and goomba it's like they had an issue he had an issue with the fact that she was so obsessed with our relationship, making sure I was taken care of. I'm, I'm really hurt and she's knowing that. Um, she's believing Velvet's a good girl. And from what I'm saying about her, you know, and she wants us to come back together. And so me and Jag, a lot of her stuff is predicated on that. She bought gifts for Velvet. She's bought multiple gifts that I can't even talk about, you know, for her big gifts, small gifts. 
and I'm just like really grateful, you know, for her energy at all. But this was our relationship and the success of our relationship was like driving the wedge in between Goomba and her because it's like their relationships falling apart while they're putting ours together. And so I could see his perspective from that standpoint. No, definitely, man. Um, yeah. Man, I, I swear it's uh, your story again. When I go online, I see hours of videos watching what your story is and, yeah. and is currently going on still to this day. And it's crazy because it's too much to consume. And one day, I hope there's a book, I hope there's a movie, I hope you yourself write music that kind of tells this whole story to kind of give us all a real introspective look on what really happened and just kind of be able to take the journey with you. And again, you're still writing your story. So, you know, we're yeah. just, that's a part of your life that you're still young and, Man, I don't want to talk. Anyway, we're going to go all the way through there, but man, it's a, definitely a blessing to be able to have you um, come through here, tell your side of what the situation with Jaguar was, but also really just kind of give a little slight inclination of what your mentality and psychology was behind going into carbonation. I hope this does redeem not only yourself, but some people who had just assumptions about what mm -hmm. things were, because again, you're very well spoken. Um, I don't see no crazy in you. I, you know, you're not out of your mind. I don't see no malicious intent in you. Look deeper. Yeah, I'm just, yeah, we're gonna, yeah we're, gonna, we're gonna we're gonna bring you back. We're gonna go okay. deeper. We're gonna go deeper because again, I think this story is only part one of many parts. Oh my god, uh, to go through and there's a dissection that we have to kind of do to kind of really get the whole, uh, you know, plethora of things that happen with you and happening with you and kind of go through there. But with that being said. Um, Tell us what do you have going on right now as far as for those fans who do want to see uh, what Solar has coming up, what Solar is doing. Uh, you know, again, you're, people are just enamored about what's going on with you. Yeah. How can they be in tune on a daily, whether weekly, monthly, on what you have going on and what do you have coming up for people who are in tune with you okay. that they can kind of tap in with? Great questions. Uh, re really... I've done so much. I've offered so much. I'm at the point to where I just want to be myself. There's three things I want to do in a day. I want to write my book, which I got a couple books on the way. They'll be done when they're done, and then we'll know about those. But definitely want to stay following for those books. They're actually going to be short books, all explaining everything from, from the knowledge um, all the way to different ways to live your life, from relationships to raising children. So those are all going to be in that. Music is the other thing I want to do in my day. That's it. And other than that, I really just want to like do Forex trading and stuff like that. I love that stuff. That's what I'm pretty much doing with myself. If people want to connect to me. I would recommend they do it on YouTube. I'm actually have different events coming up. So there's just three things I'm going to say. My IG is where I be at. So I'll be on um, King Love Solar. King dot love spelled with the three dot solar. S-O-U-L-A-R. Like the story, right? That's my IG. And then I want to put everything to YouTube. I want to start streaming. I've been, we've, our story's been so big. People have been making so much money off of us. I'm at the point to where I'm like, there's millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of views being generated with our names being thrown around. And I haven't seen a penny for it. So it's like, what do we do? Well, I just want to keep living my life, being myself. What I'm going to be doing with my wife, my beautiful wife, my children, and then the other news that we want to reveal. You want to do that? Your heart's pounding. I have a lot to say. Okay, yeah. Um, long story short, expect music. Expect a ton of music from both of us. Expect the books. Expect all the books. Um, I want to be streaming and I want to just, oh, excuse me, this is what we're going to be doing. I don't know how relevant this is with time. But I got an event this whole next month coming up. I got events I'm going to be doing in Jacksonville, Florida. Y'all going to want to come out to Jacksonville, Florida. You're going to be able to meet me, her, kids. We're going to be able to do yoga. We're going to do art shows. I'm going to be performing all my music live. We're gonna, it's, a, it's a number of things. It's at a place called Be and Sun um, Studio. So look up Be and Sun, Jacksonville, uh, Florida. I'll be putting it all over my page. So get my IG because all the information is going to be on there. Go ahead. And everybody in Dallas, everybody in Philly. I got the Philly ID. I, Dallas, you know, I still love Dallas. I don't know how good the, the group is going to be going now. Man, but Dallas definitely you know loves you, man. Dallas definitely loves Dallas you. Dallas and Philly go crazy for me, bro. They love me. They For everything I've done with Jags, they see it clear. 
They love me. Dallas and Philly, my numbers are going crazy because of Dallas and Philly. That's it. Everybody from there showing me mad support and love. And it's like, I just want people to know, even outside before that, after that, this coming month, what, mid-March into April, into April, mid-April, we'll be out in Jacksonville, Florida. We have this beautiful environment. We're going to be doing all kinds of things. You definitely want to pull up for that. Go ahead and give them the social medias as far as if, they don't, if they're not following you already, how to follow you. All I, they just follow me on IG. I really don't be anywhere else. King dot love, L-O-V-3 dot solar, S-O-U-L-A-R. That's me. And I'm very easy to, to get in contact with. You can get my phone number from anywhere. But if you get in touch with me, just know, like, for me, I'm very serious. I'm very, I'm very serious. So just have your stuff together or you're going to feel like I'm ghosting you or not paying attention to you or something like that. I'm not like that. I swear. It's like, I want to be there for everybody, but I'm learning. I can't, especially as things get bigger, more things in our life, our music, us pursuing what we want to pursue. I don't have the time to do what I want to do. So book a reading, book it, have everything already organized. That's the only thing I'll tell people from my experience. It's coming to me unorganized. I'm probably going to skip over you. If you come to me with your stuff organized, you can get to it. So that's it. I'm very simple. Just come correct. And just real quick, Goomba said he lied to you about his uh, 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 reading uh, uh, charts or whatever he's supposed to give you. That's not true because I have his information. About, uh -huh. You see what I'm saying? He's a liar. I, don't, I wouldn't listen to him. I ha I, like Immediately, I have his ID. Like... Bro, what do you, you're not lying to me, dude. You're not lying, you're lying to them and you're going to play yourself. So con continue, bro, continue, continue. So, yeah, he faked all the tears. He faked everything from the beginning. I'm sure, he, I'm sure that's where he's at with it. I'm sure he faked his marriage too. I'm sure he faked the guns. I'm sure he faked the bullets. I'm sure he faked, faked the pain. I'm sure he faked us being tired as hell. I'm sure he faked all the poison. I'm sure he faked all of it. I'm sure he. I'm sure he faked every swerve that he made. I'm sure he faked every cuss word. I'm sure he he faked all of it. I'm sure he faked every adjustment to that gun. I mean, that really was fake. I'm sure he faked his love. I'm sure he faked his loyalty. You want to talk about fake? I've seen fake plenty enough to know it. I've seen enough fake to know that I'm real. Hey Amen. Do you have any shout outs? Yeah, shout out to my parents. Bro, I was raised very well. Shout out to my mom, who's like never stops holding it down. Like, shout out to my mom, real talk. Shout out to uh, Ear Drummer. Shout out to my cousin, O'Dane. Um, OG, OG, shout out, shout out to you, bro. Uh, O'Dane Gibson, go, go check him out. He go crazy. But he's the one who got me connected to Ear Drummers at all. I wouldn't be making music to the capacity I'm doing now or even be in a situation if it wasn't for them as well. That's another shout out. And then the third shout out is just this one right here. This, this woman right here, you know, I don't think anybody understands me more than her. Like on a common day, in a common conversation, she gets me in every tiny way. She gets where I'm going. She gets where I want to be. She, and she agrees with it. everything she wants to do. I want to do everything I want to do. She wants to do. And we, we, we say these things wanting to see if it's going to be a match or not. And it is every time. And it's like, damn, I can't get rid of you. I can't shake you. Like we can't break up. We can't do that. We tried. We did. We, did try. we tried. And then every time we separated, it was based on us listening to other people. It was based on me. Outside influences. When it's me and her, it's like just, that's why when we keep coming together, we're like, can we please just focus on, what, on us and what we need to do? Because we about to just, we could tear up this whole game. Like, I can't wait till y'all come back so we can find out if she feel the same way. And her music is crazy. <laughs> now, now be <laughs> before I step up and step out or anything like that, I want to do a reveal about something. Someone else tried to do this for me. And I would like to take the matters into our hands by giving my wife the honors of um, doing a certain reveal that I'm sure you talk about they hate us now. Let's see. I love this. Love this. It's, it's, it's touchy for me because of the situation. 
and where I've come from, how I grew up, what I've experienced. But what I do know is that I don't regret anything in this moment or moving forward or what I've done in the past. So we are seven weeks pregnant. Woo! We gotta we gotta be able to celebrate more life. Oh my god. We got and, to and, celebrate and I'm, I'm more happy, life. I'm I'm happy about it personally because I feel like the first two pregnancies that I had it was robbed from me in a sense. And I feel like this pregnancy, I get to experience it in a way that I never have before. Mm. And it's healing me. And it's healing things that I went through as a child. Regardless of the he say, she say, I just am grateful for the, the connection and the bond that is here. What he has already done for the children that I do have. And so I see it to work. I feel it to work. And so it is working. Here's Here's what here's what I know for sure. Um, pregnancy is a beautiful thing, and it's supposed to be fun. Um, when my when the mother of my child was pregnant, I had a blast. Um, <laughs> what makes it not fun is when people are selfish, and when people mm. only care about themselves. So I know y'all are gonna have a blast. Definitely. And a father is a person who helps you make the baby, but a daddy. Is a person who pours into your children. Mm. He looks like a daddy. So I want to congratulate you both. Amen. Gratitude. People, want, people wonder Gratitude. why Gratitude. 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 they call you daddy. Say, we can't wait to see you. Man, child. you know what? And, and as a as a mother, watching her mother, I couldn't have picked a better mother. Amen. I ain't gonna catch like I, and, and then uh, that's kind of painful and kind of mean to say because there's another woman pregnant right now by me Damn. months in yeah. but the, the way it happened was righteous and let me say this last thing and for her and not, and not for her for all of us is that this is just the truth you know when she when me and her were together we loved each other we knew what it was from the beginning we were just very authentic it was like we've known each other for years already so when we finally came together on this time it was like where have we been this whole time you know we're together it's all love. It's all good. Her house. I go to her house. I'm in my house in Mexico. I leave my house to go to Ohio to go be with her and go spend time. And get them out of there. We're going to go to the tropics all together, right? I go there and her house is so pristine. It's like a church. It's like you walk into a church. But this is Ohio. This is the hood. This is not... No, it's crackheads walking up and down the block. But her house is like a church. It's like a sanctuary. Beautiful. The energy. Everything. Even her. The girls, everything. And so I'm like very amazed with it. I get the text. Janae, yeah, she sends me a text. Janae, um, also who's Materia and Carbonation, she sends me the text. And she's like, oh, we broke up. She left me like 50 times. She left me again. I'm not even a guy to take people back like that, for real. I only started doing that in the cult. And then after that, I'm just like, because if you can't show me commitment, I'm, never, I'm done with you. Like, I'm done with you. Like, I'm a Taurus Venus. Like, you ain't got commitment. I am not feeling you, like. Long term, it's just not gonna be it if I can't trust you. So, well, her, she done left multiple times. That's the one button you don't press with me. And she pressed it multiple times and I <laughs> accepted her every single time. And, you know, it's crazy is that, you know, how she treated me. I was never really happy in that relationship. A number of different things I had to be obvious, like I had to be clear about. And then this relationship exposed like crazy too. And it was like, I thought I love this woman, but no, she's obsessed with me. And I had a certain obsession with her and certain things too at certain times. She has a child. A beautiful child. This is a child of love. This is a beautiful child. This is all yes. This is all good. Um, she's cool too, like as far as I'm concerned. But as time has progressed, Velvet's response to finding out that she was pregnant when we were together was, this is beautiful. I love you. This is another you. This is more of you. I don't know how it's going to work. I don't know what we're going to do. But hey, let, let me tell you. Congratulations. How, congratulations. Let That's me tell you. to me. Like, I look at things as in, like you said, three. There's a holy trinity here. I'm going to put it on you. Seen that? I'm going to put it on you. There's a holy trinity happening right here. So, hey, we're going to leave it at that. Let the comments go crazy. Let y'all speak on what y'all speak on. Hey, let love exist, so. man. We love what's going on here, man. I got to say it, man. Velvet Solar right here. There's a unity here, man. Congratulations, first and foremost. Appreciate that. Thank you for coming through. 
y'all all three are some real life street stars. Hey man. Here real we talk, are. real talk. Here we are. Blessings, stars, blessings, you blessings, blessings, blessings. Yeah. Yes. Real life street star.